game has started. All right, well, I'm going to have to step out for one second. <laughs> I'm loving it. I'm loving it. So today is the final day of the um, of the Champ Meltwater Champions Tour event, the FTX Crypto Cup. So we're going to be covering that today. Um, so anyway, we do have some moves, and we have moves in all of these games right now. So um, just give me one second. I think I think we're pretty good. We're, we're pretty good right now. Let me just make sure. Um, but yeah. So okay, so we have this game between Magnus and Wesley. This will be, be our primary focus today. Um, so D4 and I have six C4 E6, Knight of three D5. Okay, so Wesley plays C5, going for the semi Tarash again, like he played against Jan in the previous round. Um, E3, D takes C4, Bishop C4, A6. Oh, sorry. Um, did I did I make a mistake? Oh, this, today's about to, today's about the fall, and sorry, my mistake. B5, Bishop B2, Bishop B7, takes takes Queen D8, Knight D2. Um, this was played, I believe, in the game between Magnus and Ding Loren, if I'm not mistaken, uh, in a previous Champions Tour event. Um, <clears throat> but that's. Uh, but yeah, why am I back at TSM? Because it's fun streaming from TSM. Um, so uh, that's why I'm back here. It's also a little. It's also very nice to separate um, to separate work and work and pleasure. Certainly, as well as I spoke about the past couple of days. So that's the, that's that's the large reason I'm here. Injun says Nepo is winning. Okay, should we pop over to the Nepo game very briefly? Okay, let's pop over to the Nepo game. Um, what's going on? We have. <laughs> okay, we have B3 played by Nepo. So Jan decides, Jan and Timur take the opposite approach. What they the, the approach they take now is they take the approach, okay, everybody's mad at us for making the quick draws. So now we're just going to play random random nonsense and um and and just play have fun instead. So okay, so so Jan um is slightly better here. Timur plays the hippopotamus. Okay, Jan goes H5, G5 F4 probably. Am I the only one who thinks the word pleasure is word? Okay, work and I, I don't know what do you call it. Work and life is that is that the, is, the, is that the right um, right way of doing it? I'm commentating alone. Anish might join us a little bit later. I'm not really sure yet, but um, at, at, at any rate, um, we'll see. <clears throat> okay, so this will bring even more. This will bring even more uh, criticism. Oh right, because yeah, these guys because Timur is playing a non-serious opening. Jan plays B3. I mean, these guys like what are they doing, right? Everyone's gonna be so angry. Yeah, I know I put the same game just for a second, but we'll go back to the Magnus game, um, Rook D1 here. But yeah, 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 yeah. No, I mean obviously. So it's it's not okay that they that they're tired and they they make their draws. Um, so now it's like they play bad openings and everyone's gonna be angry about that too. B3 is a good opening. Don't get me wrong, but I guarantee people are gonna be like, look at this. They play like B3 and B6. Like these guys have no respect for the game. Like everything is wrong about what they're doing. D4, D5 is the only legal way to play. That's one of the ways that you can play for sure. Um, thank you to Hopeless Fear for the Prime. Thank you to Trantham for the Prime. Thank you to East Burning Red for the Prime. Thank you to Prerac for the Prime. Thank you to Hawkson for the Prime. Thank you to Jack, Jackling, Jackling Chan for the Prime as well. Thank you so much. Thank you to Money Money for the 21 months. There are flies in my... There are... they. There's a fly in my room for 13. Crush Face for the two months. Thank you to Eth Villar for the two... J.A.C. Bell for the eight months as well. Thank you so much. Thank you to the Philos for the five. Desmar Goals for the six. Thank you, Johnny. O Potato for the 12. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. All right. What do I think of Timur getting hate on Twitter? I think it's total rubbish. It's total It's total bullocks. Let me leave it at that. Total nonsense. Um, that's all I have to say. Anyway, okay. So let's see. So Knight B3, Knight BD7, Rook D1 played by played by Magnus here. Um, whoa. Thank you to Mason Returns for the five gifted. Thank you so much to Mason Returns. Thank you for the five gifted subs. Appreciate it. Um... Did the clock just die? I have to refresh every so often, so I'll just refresh. We'll start with the refresh right now. Why only wait only Timur gets hate, not Nepo? Oh, I'll tell you why Timur gets all the hate and, and Jan doesn't get the hate. Timur gets the hate because because first of all, Nepo won the candidates tournament, so it's so he's playing a world championship match. So they give him the benefit of the doubt from that standpoint. But secondarily, Timur, much like myself, has been extremely solid in these events. And so he doesn't really win a lot of games, but he also very rarely loses. But it's generally pretty dry, and so it's much easier to hate on Timur because he he um he has a lot more draws. So that's why Timur gets all the hate. Pretty pretty straightforward. But yeah, not a fan favorite. Uh, Nepo is white. That's why Timur got hate. O okay, don't don't troll with that, you guys. But um, it is funny how in chess we blame the person who has the um, like even when I had all my draws with black against um, I had all my draws with black against um, like you know like Timur Wesley. I had some draws. Everyone blamed me for that. It was my fault that um, it was it was my fault that I drew with the black pieces. 
Um, and it wasn't the white player's fault at all. So, yeah, I mean, what, what, what I would say... Um, is that, yeah, I, I mean, I, I think it's total nonsense, but it's because Timor is more solid and his play generally isn't super sexy. So everyone's like, oh, yeah, I mean, it's obviously easier to be mad at him than it is at Jan, play, quite simply. Things are getting a bit out of hand. Um, I mean, maybe. I mean, I, I think it's it's always funny in chess how, you know, Timor kind of kind of made, he, he said this in his tweet, and I kind of agree with him. It's funny how all the, basically, the armchair quarterbacks suddenly understand chess better than he does. Um, so so that that's what I would say. I mean, and, and, I, and I 100%, I 100% agree with, with Timor, just to be clear. It, it's my fault that this pandemic started. No, it's not my fault, you guys. Uh, it might be the, f uh, let's not go there. All right, let, let's, let's, let's not go there. Okay, so Rook D1, Bishop B6 is played here. Um, let's let, let <laughs> um, 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 yeah, let's, let's not go there. Um, uh, okay, so let's see, let, let's see what Magnus will do here. Um. Yes, I. Uh, <laughs> uh, let, let's see what um, what what Magnus will play here. Uh, probably probably Bishop D two is, is what I expect. Maybe A four is a move. Both both are playable. Anyway, oh uh, will Levy join? No, Levy said he's taking the day off. Um, or that's what he said. I mean, obviously he'll probably post videos on YouTube. But I mean, it's uh, yeah. All right, so A4 played by Magnus. Wesley will play B4. Magnus probably will go A5 and Knight A4 here, I would assume. He does play A5. Although there's also Knight A2 maybe as well to hit the pawn on B4. So it's not com completely clear-cut here. <clears throat> well, I mean, I, I would say as far as Levy goes, it's obviously, it's much easier too. It's much easier. I mean, if you can, if you can make, honestly, if you can make, if you can get more, if you can get a lot of clicks and make money, it's much easier on YouTube than it is on Twitch. Um, I mean, it's like, if you look at the effort, the time effort, you're talking maybe an hour or two max versus streaming where you're grinding four or five hours every day. So it's obviously much easier um, if you're on YouTube. Yeah, once you're huge on YouTube, it looks so easy. Yeah, I mean, if you if you get big on YouTube, your the income doesn't mean you necessarily make more than you do on Twitch, but it's a lot easier. You don't have to put in the same amount of effort or work. Um, so there, there is that. But you got to edit all those videos. Uh, you just, darkness, you just hire editors, obviously. Okay. So anyway, um, Rook D1, Bishop B6, A4, B4, A5, Bishop A7. Um, probably Knight A4, I would expect at some point. I mean, we'll see. Let me turn the music up just a little bit. It feels a little bit too low for me. Don't you, don't you need like 10 viewers on Twitch to crack the 1%? It's not about the 1%. It's that on Twitch, the, 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 just because on, on Twitch, just because you have 10,000 people watching, for example, does not mean that you can turn that in straight into like monetary equation. Whereas on YouTube, if you have X number of views, like let's just say you get 100,000 views, you know how much money, you know you're making money. Um, so like it's very, very different. Um, so, so that's what I would say. Uh, YouTube revenue is actually quite different for chess because chess has a higher CPM. So no, you're actually the CPM on um, the CPM on, on, on chess on YouTube is very high. Very, very high. Okay, so we're still waiting for a move from Magnus here. Um, maybe 94, maybe 92. What's up with the chess.com logo? I made it red because we have our Cell Artois Arena later today. Tomorrow we also have um, we also have um, our world record attempt tomorrow after Tilted Tuesday. So a busy, busy Tuesday. But yeah, the CPM, the CPM for chess is very high. I mean, I'm not going to say what it is, but it's a lot higher than it is, um, you know, for just just general general content. It's a lot higher. It's, it, it, I think it's I think CPM is cost per milli, which means co which means um, per per one thousand, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, cash per milli. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Can I can I play in Stella registered Phil Gordon? Uh, Stella is deciding who who gets to play in it. They've already, they're coming up with a list of players, so I don't actually know. But also, you guys. Maybe I'm not supposed to say this, but a I I kind of I, I kind of shouldn't say this, but I'll but I'll say a little bit. We're gonna have a very big giveaway tomorrow if we break the record, which is 32 games in one or 32 wins in one hour. There's gonna be a grand prize involving like Sella, maybe like a mini fridge, maybe some other stuff, uh, uh, some other really cool stuff as well. So that's all I'm gonna say right now for um for what's going on. But we will have grand prize winner, winning winners. Also, you guys, um, if you want to be eligible for the grand prize tomorrow, since I expect to break 32 wins, um, uh, you do need to have a Twitter account. The Sella will be doing the giveaway for the grand prize on Twitter. So you do need to make sure that you have a Twitter account um, if you want to be eligible for that as well. What's up with the hair situation? Uh, nothing really. I mean, hair's pretty good. But yeah, um, anyway... I shouldn't be saying this and Hikaru just spits it out. No, I didn't say what the what the other parts of the grand prize are and other things, which are going to be really, really cool. Like, really, really cool stuff. Um, and some of the stuff will be available as merch, I believe, from Stella as well. So that's all I'm going to say. But it's going to be really hype tomorrow. 
You have beautiful hair. Don't mind the chat. My hair is completely fine. Anyway, um, do you worry about wearing a headset seven hours a day will create a canyon in your scalp? Do you mean like Tim? Is, isn't that like the same thing as what they say with Tim the Tap Man? They try to say he has like a bump on his head or something. I don't really care. Vaccinated? No, I get my second and final dose on um, June 3rd. So on, on Thursday of this week, I'll get the second. I'll get the second dose and um, and then then we'll just keep rolling along. Nothing changes. How much did we raise during the charity event? We raised um, over four hundred and fifty thousand dollars for care, in part to help um, <coughs> to help out in help out the relief efforts for COVID in India. So four hundred fifty k, amazing stuff. You guys are awesome. So thank you so much. Yeah, uh, I mean we we raised over four hundred fifty thousand. So pretty amazing. Why is ninety four good? Yeah, computer gives white a big advantage. I'm not honestly sure why. My assumption is that it's probably because... Okay, well, well, wait. Let's think about this logically. Computer says bishop c7 is fine. So what is the difference between these two squares? Let's let's think about this like um, like it's a math problem or a logic puzzle. My instinct says that it's because of this, because now the bishop targets the pawn. Both bishops target something. So because this bishop targets the knight, and this one targets the pawn where the knight guards, that's probably why bishop c7 is better, whereas in the game, after knight a4, if you go here, white just moves. And first of all, there's no target. Secondly, there's probably bishop d2 hitting b4. So that's 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 what that's my guess as to why it's worse. But okay, bishop d5, knight d4 is played here. You target h2, kind of, although it's not that big of a deal. I think the I think there are two problems. The problem is b4, the problem is also a6. Um also you guys, uh, while we're at it, let's take a look at my uh, uh let's take a look at my um my, my my market wagers for today. So currently my market value went down a lot. So I think at some point yesterday I was around five hundred dollars because um, Magnus was Magnus was sitting at um, sitting at 77 cents to win the whole event, and of course Magnus's odds have gone way down. So you see, he's still 62 cents. Um, but I'm all I, I made my bets, so I'm I'm all in on Magnus. I bet on um, I think I bet how much did I bet on Jan? I bet I bet like 50 bucks on Jan Napomniachi to win the match at 45 cents. He is now up at 58 cents. So um, so of course if Jan wins the match the, the it will go to $1, you know, the percentage correlates with the cents. So looking good there. The other bet I made was I also made a bet that um this was the other one I bet on which was uh will the will the finals between Wesley and Magnus go to a tiebreaker? I bet bigly on no as I think you guys can see um I am not doing great on that one. I am down. I am down um 11%. I'm down 11%. So so that's what we're down right now on on that on that wager as well. So Anyway, that's what we have at the moment in terms of our wagers. Um, nothing too exciting, but there we go. 840 left on time for Wesley. Low. Yeah, he is a little bit low on time. Is E5 for Wesley playable? Not really. Um, because if Wesley plays a pawn to E5 here, white goes knight to F5, hitting the king of the pawn after king F8, bishop D2. Again, you have this big weakness on B4, and A6 is also super weak, which is why the bishop should have been on C7, not A7. So Wesley is actually in some trouble here, I would say. Check the other board for a second. Okay, um, check the other board. What's going on here? This game is very, very wild. What has happened? This looks like it was really bad somehow. Okay. Okay. This looks completely winning for white. Okay, fe5, d5, here, here. Okay, knight g3. Black is knight f6 maybe here, and... Wait, this is not clear at all suddenly. Wait, Timor might, Timor might be doing okay here. Somehow this looks like it looks like um looks like Jan went wrong in this game. I'm not sure whether it was takes, maybe it was rook f1. But somehow, yeah, he went wrong. And now after knight f6, looks like black's kind of okay here. Today is the final. Today is the final day. Jan is winning, Jan is not winning anymore. But the time situation is kind of problematic for Timor as well. Anyway, um, let's go back to the main game. The the big stage. Okay, what do we have? We have rook b8. So I assume he'll play bishop d2, target the juicer on b4. Thank you to Cadmoon for the 10. Thank you to Billy for the 3. G photos for the 5,000 bits. Thank you so much to G photos. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. But yeah, so far, I mean, it looks, um, I mean, it looks, looks pretty, um, looks pretty good for Magnus, I'm going to say. Am I better at closed positions or, or, or open positions? Um, I don't know. I like, I like all positions, I would say. No levy today, you guys. I mean, I know you keep, keep asking over and over. No levy today. Um, maybe knight c5. Both matches were tied on the first day, you guys. 
So knight c5, knight c5, rook c1 maybe. Takes, takes, I think rook dc1 looks quite good. Maybe rook a4. Looks very problematic for uh, for black here. Get Anish to comment. Um, I asked I asked Anish, what site is that? That is a Polymarket. They are a sponsor or coverage um, on our channel for this event. So big shout out to Polymarket. Um, I haven't looked closely, but but from what I've seen, they, there have been over... Um, there's, there have been somewhere north of $150,000 in volume, like in terms of the volume or the wagers um, on the chess market during this event. So um, you guys are all amazing, and uh, it's, it's been it's been a lot of fun. So, yeah. First time seeing you wear a button-down shirt. Yeah, I don't usually dress up, but I, I decided to go to Macy's yesterday afternoon and buy some new clothes. Because, I mean, when you wear the same shirt for months on end, at some point it gets a little bit old. And, you know, I think for for the viewers who, who, who sub to the channels and everything, I mean, when you wear the same shirt for months on end, at some point they get tired of it. And it's really not – it's it's not just not a good look, I think. Um, so, anyway. Uh, all right. Let's see. Obviously, I'm making a joke about about a certain certain big streamer. Um, okay, so let's see. <laughs> okay, uh, probably Magnus will trade here, I guess. Yeah. Bishop c4 is not a good move here because Black can just take and get two pieces for the rook. No, I'm obviously making it. I'm 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 obviously making a joke about XQC. Uh, so Charlie actually Charlie does it too, but I mean, I mean XQC is the obvi obvious one. Um, so yeah. Totally, that this new shirt will make me sub for another month, right? Right, of course, yeah. Uh, Rajbob blundered. Okay, this this game's gonna, probably gonna be pretty slow, so let's go back to Rajbob's game. Um, where is it? It's right here. Uh, do we have more moves? We do. Whoa, 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 whoa. what what just happened? Wait. Okay, so we have more moves. Knight c5. Okay, rook f6. Isn't this just bad after rook c6? I feel like there's probably some way where white can win with like rook f6 me this looks really really bad for black rook c6 looks crushing here because if you go queen a5 i can sack and this is brutal because you have to take and then i make a check and then i take and i just i just ladder you here brutal brutal checkmate so i think if 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 uh yan plays rook c6 he's well on his way to a victory here thank you to edz leech for three months thank you, thank you so much to gphotos again for the five thousand. please say hi vina hi vina yeah same game on both boards yeah because i'm okay I mean, I can obviously put the put the smaller board back. Um, just give me one second. There we go. Okay, we'll leave it on this one just for a little bit. Yeah, Jan, Jan is gonna win, I think. Queen e seven. I mean, this is just crushing. Is MV is MVL suddenly on suddenly on form? Suddenly out of form? I feel like Maxime has been on a downward downward um tr trend, or he's been on a downward spiral for a little bit of a while. I would say. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Did Jan wake up in an aggressive mood? I mean, Jan, pl Jan played B3 to start, which was, I mean, not the uh, not the, not the most exciting move. But then, then when I think Timur played B6, it became a little bit of a, just a funny funny game. Thank you to Habaner Market for the two months. Thank you so much. Cam looks even better than usual. It could be the lighting. I, I mean, I don't I don't know. It's the same camera, obviously. Okay, so Queen A7 played. So isn't Rook H6 just GGs or not? Check here and takes. Isn't this just game over? Wait, the bar says zeros. What am I missing? Let me try to solve this without the computer. Let me leave the lines off. What are the moves here? Yeah, I mean, queen, queen g1, knight f1. Takes, takes. Ah, maybe you have rook a6. Oh, you have rook a6 and there's no check. Oh, rook a6 is... Oh, Rook A6 is beautiful. Wow, Rook A6 is a beautiful move. I think a real-life actuary for the 14. Oh, that's really beautiful. Beautiful idea. So, actually, maybe then it's not so easy. Maybe then... Computer says zero. Wow. Did Jan... What did Jan do wrong? Huh. But if you don't sack the Rook, then you then you have pro problems. Um, Go back to the Magnus game. Um, Sure, okay, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go back to that one. Okay, what do we have? So we have, um, so we had knight c5, takes, takes, rook a c1, takes, takes, king d7. This is starting to look like a very classic Magnus game where he's basically, the problem for black is these two pawns that are both under attack. Because if he could go a5 here and connect the pawns, he'd be fine. But these two pawns are super weak, targeted by the double juicers. So I think white's better. White's better. Whether Magnus wins remains to be seen, but this looks like a pretty classic Magnus kind of position. A little dark in my office. People said the lighting is good. I can obviously turn more light on too. 
Okay, there you guys go. I turn more light on. Okay. Okay. Um. So yeah, I have an overhead light. I have um. I have my my um. My my uh, Elgato lights as well and so forth. I want your fridge. I mean, yes. I, I mean, my fridge is pretty beautiful. Am I overly surprised they're playing out today? No, because what Jan and Timur are doing is going the exact opposite approach. Basically, they're, they're annoyed that everyone said they drew, so they're just playing nonsensical openings. And I love it, frankly. I absolutely love. Uh, I absolutely love what they're doing because they're taking the exact opposite tack now. Wasn't it better at my at my home office? Uh, I I prefer streaming from TSM. What is TSM? Is Team Soul Amid? They're an esports organization. Uh, valuation of four hundred and fifty million dollars. Uh, they have a league team. They have me with chess. They have Apex teams, Rainbow Six, um, Valorant, and so forth. So um, yeah, do I live with TSM Wardell? No, TSM Wardell lives in um, Wardell lives in a uh, can Canada, doesn't he? Or am I wrong? Doesn't doesn't he can't waiting for Chess Twenty Four to make a savage comment on Twitter again? Thank you to part of the Nova Chess for the gift of sub. Thank you so much to Isrix um all right so h4 is played here probably b3 maybe um maybe rook c well you can't go rook c8 either you can't really go b3 so it looks like a problematic situation here i would say yeah he's in canada right can we have reggie on stream um uh can we have reggie on stream reggie's not here at the office today i can see if, if he's around he's like playing ping pong or something on one of the breaks i could totally totally bring him in the other board is not moving okay let me see let me let me refresh oh the clock's just not moving sorry okay let me let me just um let me refresh now now the clock will be moving right um there we go yeah now the clock will move yeah okay so um there's no i in canadia <laughs> yeah good one anyway um but yeah so so yeah clock has a lot of problems yeah the clocks have been stopping traditionally quite a bit do I watch tennis? Yeah, I do watch tennis. And as somebody who, as somebody who spent um, the better part of a year and a half in in uh, in Canada, in British Columbia, um, like trust me, I know how I know how, I know how to uh, say it. So relax, everybody. Take a deep breath. Wesley is quite long time in this game, down to four minutes, and it's a difficult position to play. So we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Get Anish. Um, I've sent Anish a message last night. He hasn't. He he said he'd let me know. He hasn't. He hasn't replied. So. Yeah, it's all good. We'll, we'll see if he wants to join. If he doesn't, it's also good. So, yeah. Does Wesley have counterplay? No, the problem for Wesley here is that basically he's in a unpleasant situation because he can't touch the pawn on a5 because the bishop is on the white tiles. So he can't really touch it, whereas um, whereas Magnus is the double op combo. So because he's, his bishops are both colors, he can target all the black pawns here. So it's a very tough position to play. They had a King Oscar for the five months. Appreciate it. So I'm guessing Magnus goes here and Wesley probably wants to reroute the juicer to connect. It looks bad though. It, this does not look like a, um, this does not look like a position that I'd be happy with. Um, if I'm, if I'm, uh, if I'm Wesley. Okay. So Rook D3 almost certainly is going to go Bishop A4. Although Bishop F3, maybe Knight D5. I'm not sure. We'll see. Am I allowed to show the players cams? No, I'm not, um, at the moment. Because Chess24 has the rights to that, that footage. Um, maybe down the road there might be, be a possibility to work out an agreement. But as of right now, they 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 percent have the rights. This cruel summer. Okay, I think Bishop F3 is a big problem now. Although, let, let me see why. Why is it a problem? What does the computer say? Let's see. Computer says Bishop F3, Knight D5, takes, takes. Rook G3. Ah, Rook G3 and I guess then Rook G5 or Rook C4. I'm not sure. He made some returns for the gift of sub. Thank you so much. He made some returns. Appreciate it. Thank you. Oh, Sessa says Rook G3. Oh, Rook G3 also makes a lot of sense. Actually, yeah, Rook G3 makes sense too. And then Bishop. But what's the difference? Do you have like Bishop E5 or something? Did I see the Ludwig drama? No. What is the Ludwig drama? You? D I don't want to know. Okay. I don't want to know. All right. Fair enough. Um. All right. Okay. Today on Twitch soap opera, yeah. <laughs> okay. Will I wear a formal shirt and dress dress every day now, Pog? No, I mean, I mean, no, definitely not. Okay, so let's see. What, Magnus is still thinking. He's got 440, plenty of time left. Um, 
Well, I, I assume Magnus will find... I don't know if he'll find Rook G3 or he'll play Bishop F3. I think he's going to go Bishop F3 and trade. That's the most human reaction, but he has time to think, so he might find Rook G3. I'd be very impressed if he finds it. Something happened in the other game? Oh, sorry. Yeah, do I have... What, what happened in the other game? Timor is losing. Okay, Queen F2. Uh, and then Timor went Rook A7... Knight of five, and now Timur's in really bad shape. Okay, Magnus plays bishop e5, which is apparently not the best. I'm not sure why, but it's apparently not best. Okay, bishop e5 played by by Wesley. Do I get OT for streaming today? What do you mean by OT? What do you mean by OT? Do you mean like overtime pay or something? Or what do you mean by OT? What do you mean by OT, you guys? <laughs> I mean, do you mean, do I get overtime? Do you mean, do I, do you mean, do I get overtime pay? <laughs> okay, you guys. Um. Okay, yeah. Okay, so Rook G3 played by Magnus, so probably G6, Rook C5. I mean, Wesley's in trouble here. He might be able to draw, but, um, but yeah, no, of course I don't get overtime pay. Do I have to pay chess, pay chess 24 for covering this? No, I do not. Um, no. Okay, rook c5 played by Magnus. If bishop c4, there's b3 to, to remove the bishop from guarding the pawn. If you go bishop c6, I mean, I don't. it feels like there's maybe this, 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 and just try to route the rook in, in on the h5. It looks really bad at any rate. So let's see what Wesley's going to do. He's, run, he's running kind of a little bit low on the clock, but if Wesley can hold this game... Wesley's in very good shape. This, I think, a lot of the, lot of the, um, lot of the, the, the way this match shapes out is going to depend on how this first game goes. If, if, if Magnus wins, I think there's a good chance it could be a very short match potentially. If it's a draw, Wesley's in the driver's seat. So this first game is uber critical for the, for the overall, um, for, for the overall match. Thank you to Alit Saji, or a light sage, sorry, for the uh, prime thing, the mighty neat for the prime thing, W seventy nine for the four as well. Thank you so much, appreciate it. Yeah. Okay. Now F five H five, and I mean, I mean, maybe maybe Wesley can hold, but I mean, this is looking really bad. Like Rook C one. I think I think Wesley's gonna lose this game. So this is getting very dangerous. This this wooden shield on E five is such a problem for Black to deal with. And even though you get an extra juicer, you're you're gonna White's gonna infiltrate on the King side. This looks really really bad. And with two minutes on the clock, I don't know how you save this. Maybe it's not even salvageable. You guys say it's plus five on the computer? Yeah, so it's already gone, apparently. Am I rooting for Teamwork? I, I don't I don't really have a favorite there. Um, I guess technically, since I made a small wager on Yan, maybe I'm rooting for Yan, but I mean it's not that big of a deal either way. That that's what I would say. Um how is Rook C1 a good move? Because it just it keeps the well, I mean it's 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 just an obvious move, I guess you could say. But you don't want to trade rooks because the one advantage White has is that White's rooks are more active, um, and he's got a wooden shield on E5. So the wooden shield covers a lot of squares. You can infiltrate. I mean, Black's pieces are just very clumsy here. The 0 0.5 means that the match was drawn yesterday. Why can't Black just take A5? Because because if you were to take on A5, I trade and I go rookie Rook H3, and my rooks are just getting all in here. They're getting all up in your business. Yeah, so rook e8 trade. I mean, rook h6 is coming, rook h7. Yeah, I mean, this must be losing. Rook h7, king e8, and I mean, this has to be losing somehow. I don't know how it's losing, but it's definitely losing. Update the score, Timor resigned. Um, okay, I will have my mods update that score while they're at it. Um, so Timor loses the first game. So all my bets today are actually looking very, very good right now. Um, okay, there we go. Yeah, all of my wagers are looking really, really good. Sell, sell, sell. Yeah. I mean, I could sell my yawn. I could sell my yawn, yawn, my yawn calls, but I, I don't think I want to sell. I don't I don't think I want to sell on yawn because I think he's probably going to win the match. I bet on the favorites. You know what's funny, Foggy? Yawn was actually not the favorite. When um when I had when I placed my wager on Yan, Yan was forty five cents. Timor was fifty five cents. So they actually were projecting that um that that Timor was was a fifty five forty five favorite. So that's what I would say. Yeah, the clock here is very bad news. Um, I mean, I mean I feel like Rook C seven and Rook A seven is probably winning because you can bring the bishop, but you can also double. You can double on the seventh or Castle Mania, as Michelle Carre would like to call it. So, I kind of think this is pretty, pretty, pretty bad. 
I would have taken Yan too. Yeah, I mean, I thought Yan was a very... I thought it should have been 55-45 for Yan, not 45-55 for Timor. Just because I think Yan should be a very slight favorite in Blitz. Um, where am I currently streaming from? It's not the regular place. I'm streaming from the TSM facility here in Playa Vista, California. I did stream from here in, in I believe, like November and December of 2020. So um, it's not the first time I've streamed from here, but it has been quite a while. Even Rook H2 is plus three? Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, it's not hard for white to play. It's just because the, the problem for black is there actually there's no simplification. Black can't trade pieces here. Like I bet even a move like F4 is still very good. Just F4 can't do rook H1 even. And the problem is everything is on the opposite tiles. Opposite color bishops can be very good if you're trying to draw a game. But when there are like rooks on the board and you you just can't do anything about this bishop, it's just glued permanently because everything else is on the white tiles. Um, it can be really bad if your king is uh, weak. I mean, you can even you probably can even run your king up. You can probably go like here. I mean, it's, it's just that bad. You can probably go one, two, three, four. It's just that bad. Why is Hikaru in the TSM headquarters? Um, because they have a couple of streaming rooms. I'm very proud to be a member of TSM. And uh, it, it also gives TSM more exposure as well. I mean, I, I, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Like, I, I say it many, many times. And people can believe me, not believe me. If they, you know, either way, they, they want to slice it. But, um, you know, if people... Oh, B3, nice move by Magnus. Just sitting on the position... He's just sitting on Wesley here with B3, just like asking Wesley what his next move is. Um, but, you know, if, if you sign a contract and you're, you're with an org, like, you know, they show a lot of belief in chess as well as me as a streamer. So, I mean, you should definitely do all you can to help help promote them. Yeah, you can basically just sit, sit in this position and do nothing. I mean, okay, now Wesley plays G5, Bishop C7. Um, let me put up on the other one. Let me put the small board up. So, I mean, I think I think King E8, and I, th I assume West Magnus wants to go here. Maybe also Rook A7 to eat the juicer on A6. Also, additionally, this Rook is glued now. This Rook is stuck. It's just completely stuck. There's just nothing this Rook can do. It's just it's stuck on the square permanently. So, Black's actually just down a Rook here, almost. Because this Rook is dead. It's just, it, it can't go anywhere. It's just dead forever. So, this this is just over. Wesley's just down a Rook here. He just has a Rook that's stuck here for 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 the rest of time or the rest of eternity or eternity or at least until until um until the apocalypse so yeah maybe rook a7 here i mean everything's good okay rook g7 yeah this is just i mean you're just you're dead you're down a rook here <laughs> you're just down a rook your rook is just glued it's just glued to the square wesley's gonna resign pretty soon in fact wesley does resign already so uh magnus wins the game very very impressive win by Magnus um great way to start start the start the second day very very impressive okay so Wesley resigns so that's the end of the first game there too um so that means that that uh Magnus goes up 1-0 in his match as well so pretty pretty good stuff for Magnus definitely what you want um if, if you're Magnus very very solid start today um no drama whatsoever and uh, definitely what definitely the start that you know anybody wants on day two for sure um, thank you to Evan Forey for the four months. Thank you so much, Evan Forey. Appreciate it. How come I've never been to Colombia? Um, I really want to go to Medellin at some point. Um, uh, yeah, I think I want to go to Medellin at some point. He moved to California to pay him 13.8 taxes voluntarily. Um, I would say a couple of things. The way that I look at it is much different. There are certain places where there are more opportunities um, versus less opportunities. I would say, for example... Um, you know, for, for example, I, I had a chance to do some stuff with, uh, Michelle for recording for one of her upcoming videos about pog champs. There are some other collaborations which may, which may or may not be happening in the near future. And those sorts of things would not happen if I was not, not in California. The weather doesn't hurt either. Yeah. And also I'd say again, as I've said before, when you're in, when, where did I live before Florida? Uh, I've, I've lived, I lived in Florida. I grew up in New York. Um, I grew, I grew up in New York, and, and just to add also, like, I started making some money as a chess player when I was in New York, and um, and I did leave New York. Like, I, I mean, I left New York, and I, I went to St. Louis, and I went to Florida, so it's not like I'm unaware of, like, state income tax. Like, I, 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 I grew up in New York. Like, I'm not oblivious to it. Um, but what I would say is that, you know, there are certain things that matter matter more in life. Have I ever been to Bruges? No, I've never been to Bruges. Um if these donors are legit, thank you so much for uh, to Emily Fish for the. Are these legit donors? Wait a second. I'm sorry. I have to make sure if these. Are you guys seeing this on the screen or not? No, you're not. Because it, it looks. I'm seeing. What I'm seeing is I'm seeing. I'll, I'll, I'll change my scene, you guys, so that you can see it too. Um, 
Let me, let me see if I can change this. Let me let me change this. Let me move my cam out of the way. Um, I don't know if this is legit or not, but let me move this out of the way. Like, I think you guys see what it is. You see, you see the chat, right? It says, Hikaru received a $25 donation from Emily, Gel Emily Fish. Hikaru received a $50 donation. Hikaru received a $200 donation. And the bottom one, which isn't showing right now, says Hikaru received a $99 donation as well from Emily Fish. So... I think that's legit. I'm not 100% sure. But anyway, thank you so much to Emily Fish for the... Um, that is... Uh, that's like nearly $400 in, in donations on chess.com. Thank you so much for the uh, for the do donations. Appreciate it. Thank you. I don't... It's It looks sus. I think it's legit, but I can check. Um, but yeah. Anyway. Um, all right. Thank you to Axic for the 11 months. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Anyway, um, all right, so we're just going to wait for game two. Or actually, we have game two, so let's just leave the Rajbov game up until they start. Okay, in this game, we have Jan playing the modern defense. Or actually, wait, is it the modern or is it the northern lion defense? Um, oh, wait, sorry, no, I meant the north sea defense. Um, I guess it's just modern pier, because there is, there is this one line, which is um, e4, g6, d4, knight f6, and this is the north sea defense um like knight h5 and i think bishop e2 d6 and this is this is this is what's called the north sea um north sea defense anyway it, it, i was wrong it, it's just a standard standard modern um modern defense so okay so knight e7 played here um probably bishop e2 here i'm not playing the crypto cup because i lost to um i lost to uh matt magnus in the quarterfinals so that's why i'm not playing this is the finals Why not visit Japan during the Olympics? I've been in, I was in Vancouver during the 2010 Olympics and being in a city during the Olympics, it can be really hype if the city's city's like kind of small, small ish the way Vancouver is. But if it's a city like Tokyo, which is just so massive, um, it's going to be a nightmare. I think is what I would say. All right. So 92, 95 C3 played here. Once we get games in the, in the, uh, in the Magnus game, we'll obviously go back to that. Um, but until then, we're just going to leave it on this game since they have started. Do I live at the TSM facility? No, I don't live here. Although you guys, I am gonna I'm gonna say something. So when I was streaming here, maybe about in late, very late 2020, um, I there, I came here I came here to stream one morning for whatever reason. I just you know I was just going around, just looking around, and um and one of the doors was locked. So I I just like I just kind of I kind of like it was it was closed. It was just a league door. I kind of just wanted to want to take a look, and there was actually um uh reggie the owner of tsm his brother was actually sleeping on the floor in in the um in in the league room where like the guys play their their actual competitions and his um his, his dad was just like or not his dad sorry his brother was just like sleeping on the floor in that room so uh so it's not like it yeah yeah dan exactly yeah dan yeah dan was sleeping on the floor in the um in in the league room where all those guys play their lcs competitions so uh, <laughs> i don't live here but it's pretty funny thank you to Brodzy b for the two months um, but yeah, so no, no one lives here though. No, no, but yeah, anyway, um, yeah. So what do we have here? Not a lot. C3 Knights four. Okay. B3 Knight A5. White's better, but it's going to be a slow game. Oh, we do have moves in the Magnus game. So let's get back to the Magnus game. Sorry about that. You guys, I just noticed that. Um, so let's keep it there. Okay, what do we have here? What is this? E5 is not the main. This actually looks very dubious. This looks very dubious by Magnus. What is this? Very, very dubious. Very suspicious. All right, you guys. I'm gonna cash out. I'm gonna cash this out. Um, I'm gonna cash this out. Uh, one second. I'm gonna cash this out. I'm up six percent. I don't feel good about this. I'm gonna cash this out. I don't like this opening, and it's probably a mistake. But I don't feel good about this. I don't feel good about this opening from Magnus. Okay. So yeah. I, I just I don't feel good about it. I don't I don't feel good. So I'm gonna, let's go back here. Yeah, I I don't feel I don't feel good about it. This opening. I mean, I know Magnus is fine here, but I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it. I mean, 
it's not that I want to lose money. I think that the, I think there's a good chance that Magnus might Magnus. Not that he's going to lose the game, but I think the odds of him losing here are much higher than if it had been some standard E4, E5. I just don't like the opening. Uh, why isn't the time ticking down? How can you sell it before the bet is over? Because it's like the it's like the stonk market. Uh, you don't have to hold. It's not like you have to hold it till the end. I mean, and maybe Magnus will survive, and then I'm then I'm going to look then I'm going to look very stupid for cashing out. But I just I feel bad about this opening. I just feel bad. It is liquid, yeah. I just I feel bad about it. I don't know why. I just I just feel bad. So I just I just want to take my six percent. You know, it's pretty pretty good pretty good. Um, clocks are clocks are moving, but I'll I'll, I'll refresh the other page while I'm at it. Um, but yeah, I don't I don't feel good about it. I don't feel good. My my instinct is that it's just it's 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 a it, I, it doesn't feel good, and the, and the, the, the reason I'm also going to do it is because if Magnus loses this game, then I think there's a very high likelihood that we could just have like two draws and be in a tiebreaker. So I don't, I don't. That's why I want to get out now before it's uh, too too dangerous. Bad, very bad, not not good. <laughs> so it's not possible someone's completely losing. And you take out. Well, you could, but the thing is, it's a position. Let's just say Mag. Let's just say Magnus here hypothetically plays. Uh, what's a losing move? Say Magnus goes bishop c7. Which hypothetically, a losing move after d5, the, the odds would spike. It would not stay at 76 cents. It would go to like 95 cents here in like the the the, the split second. So it's it's not like that would happen. That's kind of the point. Um, so I just I don't like the opening here. I just I don't like it. I mean, maybe Magnus will find a way, but I I don't I don't I just I don't like this opening at all from Magnus. Paper hands, not I don't know if it's paper hands, but you know I'm I'm like um I was thinking about this, and I know there are poker people like Phil Gordon watching some some others who are who are watching right now. So I'm like I, the guy that I am when it comes to this sort these sorts of things is I'm like um I'm like Kanish from the movie Rounders. Anybody who plays poker and is watching, I'm the guy who like I'll take I'll take my little profits, my gains, um because that's 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 what that's what works. I'm not gonna go moonshotting most of the time. So yeah, that's 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 what I would say. Anyway, love the reference. Yeah, I'm the guy. Like, I'm the guy. I'll take my six. I'll take my six percent. Um, and I don't like it here. And and I'll I'll move along. Anyway. Um. Okay. So let's see. What what's gonna happen here? So is he gonna play c4? I mean, is he gonna take? Magnus is also burning time. And the problem is that if Magnus loses, like I'm looking at a big. I mean, that doesn't mean that I can't. I couldn't yolo it. But it's gonna go from like 77 cents probably back to. 60 maybe 55 cents i'm gonna be sitting on a loss and then i have to yolo it all the way um so that's the problem at move four white was plus 2.3 you mean this oh is this the jalalabad or no it's not not quite the jalalabad but close do i reinvest dividends always always reinvest dividends compound compounded compounding is uh one of the greatest greatest uh things in the world it, it looks like a mouse with how long he's taking in the next. Oh, you think you think that Magnus meant to go e? Did Magnus mean to go e6 here? I guess Magnus could have meant to go e6 and play to e5. Did he slip? I guess theoretically he could have slipped with e5 instead of e6. I wonder if he slipped. It just did somebody see like his face on the cam? There was no reaction on his cam. Okay, there's no reaction. Probably it was intended. You doubt he slipped? Yeah, I, I mean I don't know. I don't know. So yeah. Anyway, um, okay, so we have a move. C4, bishop, c2, knight, g6 played here. I mean, this looks pretty bad. Um, you took 6%, someone lost 6%. Yeah. Am I invested in single stocks or something like the S&P 500? Yeah, of course I am. Um, obviously. Uh, let's see. What's the, I mean, d5 is a move. Maybe a4 is a move. I'm looking for moves besides d takes e5. So a4, b3 are two moves. Um... Not sure which one's best. Hold the S&P 500 single stock. No, I, I mean, I, I own some dividend stocks, um, which have done extremely well for me. Timor is winning again. Oh, right. Timor is white. Wait, Timor. Wait, I'm sorry. Wasn't Timor. Didn't Timor lose in game one? Why is why is Jan playing this as black? Timor lost in game one, right? Am I insane? Timor, Timor lost the first game. So, yeah, anyway. Um. All right, so let's go back to the um, let's go back to this game. Okay, so why is white better in this position? Probably because black has not developed and his pieces are a little bit clumsy. And additionally, white has a big center. White has two pawns in the center here, so that's probably why. Uh, 
how, how can black respond to d5 here probably you move the knight to e7 where is levy levy is on um levy is taking a break right now d5 was already played oh is it is it is it not um it's not no no d takes e5 was already played by by this by um by 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 uh by um by wesley why did i look at the ceiling when i was answering where levy is haha because i was trying i was trying to turn some air on that's why okay so 94 played here very very bad position for um very very bad position here for uh for magnus thank you to suffice max tour for the four months skr skr for the 10 months appreciate it yeah i mean magnus is in really bad shape really really bad position um why is this a good move because f4 is coming there's also knight f5 next move thank you to chafusop for the gifted sub thank you so much appreciate it so um what's the, so so why you should probably play f4 here f4 looks great f4 knight g6 i guess knight f5 or bishop e3 here um i don't like this position at all for um it's a very bad position well on each visit i i don't know if he's gonna visit we'll see we'll see if he'll visit um at some point i, I he hasn't responded so i doubt it but uh, but maybe he will I was in the finals of the NIC classic yeah typing out essays no so f4 played by Wesley um this is awful for Magnus just Bishop e3 I mean White's got great center control you can put the knife on f5 here a very very bad position for Magnus really really bad and I'm feeling much better that, that I that now I'm feeling really really good because Magnus might still might Magnus might still survive this but I definitely um oh whoa oh whoa look at this you guys oof I got out I think it's 74 cents and this tanked it tanked to a 60. oof oof it went way down that 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 yeah so ouch ouch so I did make the right decision in the short term at least ouch Okay, so knight c6 takes probably queen h5 yeah wesley is wesley's on a roll here does it make you feel like elon manipulating the market and such dude that's not i'm not doing that you're acting like you're acting like i like i own like the majority of the uh or sorry i was on, on the wrong scene sorry you're, you're acting like the majority of what happened was like somehow me dude chill so yeah so he trades on c6 he goes queen h5 really really bad here really really bad um no you what you, the, the the manipulating is a different thing that would that would mean like every single move I'm like placing a bet basically or something like that but yeah anyway um okay I don't like Magnus's position here by the way e5 is coming f5 is coming knight d2 knight f3 is coming this is terrible for Magnus absolutely terrible um I think Dr Speedy for the five I electro for the eight holy inquisition for the prime um queen b6 I guess the only idea is what you want to go queen b6 queen c5 trade some queens but I mean it's really not it's um it's not pleasant here it's definitely not pleasant your word is taken at such high value it's definitely manipulating the market but in a completely legal way it's like listening to Jim Cramer how am I manipulating I'm not placing a bet I just cashed out my bet manipulating means that somehow it benefits me and I'm not I'm not I'm not even betting I took my bet out what are you guys talking about um yeah and, and the, what I had was like 70 bucks 70 bucks in a 70 bucks in a 1.3 1.3k market or what, however much has been traded like come on let's be serious <laughs> that's like saying yeah it's like saying oh look I bought like five shares of, of GME exactly and like that's manipulating the market give me a break <laughs> all right um so what is Magnus gonna play Queen b6 or Queen d7 or castles here very very dicey situation for uh for Magnus not sure what he's gonna do thank you balls deep for the 300 bits thank you so much hey car thanks for all the content while we're still locked down here in Canada any chess book recommendations for openings beginner strategies um nothing specifically I would say um but yeah Okay, so what Magnus is way down on the clock. I do not like this time situation at all for Magnus. Clock on the Nepo board isn't working. Yeah, the clocks consistently get stuck. So let's reload this up here. 
Why why not go e45 with your Magnus? Uh, you mean e45 on move one? Maybe. So. Um. I mean, I think queen b6 is queen b6 is pretty good. For Magnus, it's the only move that I can see that makes sense. I, there are no other moves that make sense. Because if you castle here, I mean, I just feel like you're just getting steamrolled. Bishop e3, knight e2, knight f3, rookie 1, e5, f5, and you just resign immediately. So he does play it, okay, as expected. But Magnus is down on time, 531 here. Um, so it's, it's really, really tricky. So, um, yeah. Do I think Magnus and Nepo try weird things in terms of prep for the championship? Nepo, I understand a little bit more. For, for Magnus, though, I think it's different because, because the thing is Magnus has lost to Wesley two times in a row now. So it seems kind of odd to just like play play more like random randomized openings because Magnus really needs to prove a point now. If he loses another match to Wesley, I mean, that's three times. Like that, that'll be three times in a row that he's lost in, in these events to Magnus. And I think it starts to affect your, your mental at some point. So, yeah. Okay, so queen c5. Okay, makes sense by Magnus. Um, oh, he beat him last time in the match for third place. Yeah, but there wasn't much on the line. Kind of like what Timur and, uh, and Jan are doing right now. I would say it's much different. It's a different scenario when you're playing for first prize versus like playing for third and fourth. Maybe e5, maybe knight d2, knight e4 to follow it up. Um... Am I guaranteed a place in the finals? Not necessarily, um, but I should probably be in the finals. Like, Bishop e3, knight e2, I mean, this is just terrible for black. Everything's collapsing here for black. Everything's collapsing. Thank you, Crackhead Chess, for the gifted sub. Thank you so much to Crackhead Chess. Appreciate it. Here for the chess, stay for the bangers. Yep. Thirty-one K. What happened? Um, I think uh, there's just a lot of people following the final state. It's an exciting day. Finals of the um, of of the FTX Crypto Cup today. A lot of people watching it. It's pretty dramatic. Um, and so why not? I mean, it's it's still below the all-time highs anyway. So it's not like we haven't had these numbers before. I think our all-time peak was around 80, 85K when I played Magnus um, in one of the previous events. Okay, I assume bishop e3 and knight d2. Yeah, just clean development by Wesley. Knight d2, rook d1, or rook e1. Yeah, we had, I think, 85k. So maybe knight d2, maybe rook d1. It's, it seems like the most obvious move to me. I don't see anything else that really makes sense. Thank you to Gertie for the four months. Thank you so much to Gertie. Appreciate it. Thank you. I'll break 100k for the World Championship match. Maybe. Looking sharp today. Thank you. Appreciate you guys. Okay, so I'm surprised that Magnus or Wesley's not gone 92 yet. Thank you to my bottom stings for the prime. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Probably knight d2, and I mean I don't know I, I don't see any other moves for white here because normally when you play play chess you're looking for candidate moves so you're looking for op options that make sense and a4 doesn't really look right I mean e5 and bishop e4 I can kind of see kind of or knight d2 knight e4 bishop e4 again though you kind of give black chance to play f6 maybe knight h4 f5 there are a couple options here so I don't love e5 so I think I would by, by I would default to knight d2 here. I mean, Magnus can definitely come back in the game. It's just that right now, the position is very unpleasant. Magnus looks like a snooker player today. Really? <laughs> okay. Uh, he's probably wearing like the, uh, he's probably wearing that jacket, right? He's probably wearing the jacket with the, like the, um, whatever you call it. I mean, e5 or knight d2 are the only two moves that make any sense here. Oh, he's wearing the velvet jacket. Okay, I mean, e, maybe e5, queen e5, queen c7, queen h5 makes sense to play f5, f6. I mean, I, this also makes sense. Both moves make sense, actually. e5, the more I look at it with queen h5, looks very logical. Okay. 
Okay, so he plays queen h5. Interesting choice here, um, which I also like as well. So he preserves the idea to play e5 or f5, and he just puts the queen here, and he still wants to go like 1, 2, and gg with like rook d1. Like even e5, f5, very, very, uh, very aggressive. I couldn't even watch this movie where nobody else was streaming it, streaming it to be honest. Uh, I mean, it's it's what it is. Also, those of you who are here, since I know there are 35,000 of you guys, make sure to connect. This is going to be my daily shout-out. Make sure to connect your Amazon Prime to your Twitch Prime. So if you have Amazon Prime, you pay $100 plus to get your shipping uh, shipping immediately from Amazon. You are able to connect your Amazon Prime with your Twitch Prime and sub free to one channel every single month on Twitch. Um, so make sure to use that. It doesn't necessarily have to be my channel, but I know there are quite a few people here who do... Um, who do use uh who do do have Amazon Prime. So just use it because it does not auto renew and the only thing is you take money out of Jeff Bezos, Amazon and or Twitch's pocket and put it in the pocket of hard working streamers. So make sure to use that. It doesn't matter what channel, just make sure to use that. So okay, so C5 played here, so I guess 92 also E5 is still a move. They had a weather of games for the 16 months. They had Salabungo for the Prime. They had Davy Davy for the 4. They had Alex and Teddy for the 2 months. Air Vince for the 12. They had Ben Schwartz for the Prime. Chris J. L. Dorn with the Prime. Major Minor with the Prime. Sketchy with the Prime. Tectonic Flow with the Prime. Mako, o, uh, Mako Akola with the Prime. ZQC with the Prime. Life with Aussie TV with the Prime. Treffs with the Prime. The, the Jin Jin Jane. The, the, um, sorry, the, um, the, Ginja Ninja for the seven months. Thank you to Andrew Malcolm with the Prime and Mr. Call Me Max with the Prime. Thank you so much for all the Primes. Thank you to Brew Hacks with the Prime as well. So we keep going. Very dangerous position for Magnus here. Really, really bad. Can I take a look at the other game? Not at the second. Um, thank you to Sword Thrower for the Prime as well. Thank you so much to Sword Thrower. Appreciate it. Um, at what threshold is the bar me winning? It depends on the simplicity of the position. Sometimes it says plus six, but you're not actually, it's not an easy win for a human. Then you know, Mateo for the prime appreciate, but generally I would see about like plus two and a half for a top player, you know, barring certain circumstances should be winning. So probably 94, knight f3 again anyway. Uh, maybe f5. I guess f5 is not good because of queen e5 and you can't take the knight because of the pin. Um, thank you to Anna, Animate 87 for the prime as well. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. All right. Um, how am I doing on this fine day? I'm doing pretty pretty well. Um, so I like knight after I like knight e4. I think one of these two moves you have to play because the bishop can kind of become dangerous on this long diagonal here. I actually also maybe like rook a e1 here. Rook e1 I, I really like. Okay, goes knight f3 also good, I think. Um, both moves are good. Okay, so so what happens? So h6 is a blunder. Wait, knight f3, h6. Um, why is this a blunder? e6? Someone just said e6 in chat. e6. Oh, and then knight h8, f5, maybe. Takes, takes, knight e5 is probably good. Um, Knight f7, queen g6 is probably losing. So probably ef7, rook f7. I mean, even this though looks very, very bad for black. This is really, really bad. I mean, rook to e1. Rook to e1's a blunder. Oh, wait, rook e1's... Wait, why is rook e1 a blunder? Rook e1... Oh, rook e1's the right move? Okay. Rajabov game? I haven't looked closely. Uh, Rajabov is completely winning. Uh, maybe we'll have Anish on a little bit later, but I'm not sure yet. Um, thoughts on AMC? Nothing specific. Did Levy and I fight? No, Levy just says he's been, uh, he's been burning out a little bit, I think. And also he's been focusing on Twitch more than, uh, or not Twitch, sorry, been focusing more on YouTube than Twitch. So that's why Levy has not been around that much. Even on his own stream, other than the events, he hasn't really been streaming much. Did I see Ludwig and Aiden Ross beef? No, I have no, I have, um, I have no idea what that's about. Okay, so Rook one one Queen C6 played here by Magnus, um, I mean, this computer says plus four for white. I'm not really sure why, but um, what's the move here? 
Plus four for which reason? I guess I'll turn the lines on. Let me turn let me turn the lines back on. Uh Bishop C1 is apparently winning. I get I guess the idea is that if you if you go bishop c1 here, then you have f5. Because right now, if you play f5, black takes and you get mated. So the idea is probably that basically after bishop c1, you guard the pawn and now f5 is a big threat because your rook can capture. So that looks really, really bad. Um Sessa says queen g4 also. Okay, queen g4 as well. Yeah. Plus six on Sessa. Okay, yeah. I mean, everything looks bad. I mean, everything looks bad. Queen g4 looks bad. Bishop c1 looks bad. I mean, f5 is the only move that I think is not is uh, is probably not not clearly um, clearly good. Sessa says like twenty million winning moves. Okay, so e6. Okay. Um, oof, this also looks awful. Queen e6, f5 with the classic forkaroo. You can't take if you go knight h8. I mean, there's got to be something. This looks really gross. Goes knight h4. Um, wait, isn't this just winning? Can't you just take and take and check and and be up a? You're up a, a, a tower for a um, tower for a pony. This looks just winning. Yeah, you just take on f7 and you're just winning. Okay, so he does take. This is awful. This is just game over pretty much. Need a peanut butter jello for the prime. Paul Schultz for the two months. Uh, Wesley's playing very well, but you have to wonder what Magnus is doing because this is very bizarre by Magnus. Just he just played a bad bad line in the opening. Like, I mean, he just plays a line where he's just much worse on move ten. Like maybe it's Magnus' strategy to see how far he can push the push the limits. But I mean, it's a championship match, so it's very very strange. Very very strange. Guess 95, 96. Is Levy planning on leaving Twitch altogether? I have no idea what Levy's plans are. Um, but I do know that he's focused on YouTube first and foremost. Okay. Uh, rookie 2 and Rook F2 both look good for White here. It's in the night on H4 just hanging. It was not hanging. Um, probably, like, uh, Rookie 2 and King G1 also is good. Um, but, yeah, this is just cleanly winning. Didn't Magnus say he wasn't feeling well? He said that, but he also he also won a nice first game today. So it's just very, very weird. So what is the move here? Maybe rookie one, bishop d6. Bishop, bishop d2, probably. Probably you go here, here, and here. Probably the cleanest way. Because now if takes, you just take and your bishop guards everything. Okay, it goes bishop c1. Also a safe move, because now bishop moves, you trade the rooks and go rook f2. Number two on Twitch right now. Oh, oh wow. Really? R really? Thank you so much to everybody who's watching on this fine Monday mor morning uh, as we're on the long weekend with Memorial Day. Thank you so much to all of you guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. So, um, Magnus is going to lose this game. He's going to lose this game because also his knight is kind of stuck on the rim here. It can't, get, it can't get into the game. The pawn covers this one, and these two squares are covered by the juicer on C2. So... This knight on h4 is why it's uh, GG's pretty much. Thank you, Chillin' Low, for the prime. Thank you so much, Chillin' Low. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Yeah, you got Tifu. Oh, Tifu is number one. Tofu is number one. Okay. Nice. Is Tofu playing COD? Probably playing COD, right? Oh, Tofu is four? Okay. Okay. Um. Anyway, okay, let's see. So, what is Magnus going to play? Is he... Might just resign here, in fact. It's just that bad. Thank you to Andrew Parpart for the Prime. Thank you so much, Andrew Parpart. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Asma's got 60k. Oh. Well, is there some is there some expansion or something out? Or what's the um There's nothing special going on with WoW right now, is there? Anyway, um I guess Bishop E4 looks like the cleanest way to just win. King G1 and King G1 and um and G3 looks good. Oh, Burning Crusade is tomorrow. Oh, Burning Crusade is tomorrow. That's why. Yeah, yeah I, I, I thought there was something recent, but that makes sense. Okay, so King G1, Bishop F6, probably Bishop E4 again is clean. I mean, G3 allows Knight F3. Wesley can also just go Bishop E3 and kind of try to mop it up here a little bit. Many options. Thank you, KP Sums, for the three months as well. Thank you so much, KP Sums. Thank you so much. 
Um, when will Chess get an expansion pack? Who knows? WoW stream when? I mean, WoW was never really my thing. Um, I mean, I'm familiar with the game, but it, it was never really my thing. Okay, so F5. So, so Wesley decides he just wants to perma-lock the knight, basically. I mean, Bishop D2, E1 here. So, let's let's see. Um, probably just Bishop D2. Maybe Bishop E3 also is good, though. But both moves should be fine. I, I would probably go Bishop D2, but I don't love what Wesley is doing here because this knight maybe can jump back into the game at some point. Will Levy be joining? No, you guys. He won't be joining today. Not today. Uh, End Peasant was the latest expansion pack for chess. Yeah, Ampassant was it was the last expansion pack. Yeah. Valorant Stream 1. I haven't played Valorant in probably over a year now, so I don't know. Maybe. Okay, Bishop E1, so he wants to target the knight. He also guards the pawn. Oh, Wesley has Rook F4. Oh, he wants to go Rook F4 and just trap the juicer on the on the rim. Okay, B3, so takes, takes, takes. I guess Bishop B5, C4. I mean, everything is just winning here. Everything's winning. He just as long as Wesley takes and takes, he's just it's just GG's. Timor blundered. Okay, we'll get to that game in a second, because this game should be over pretty soon. This is where we should stay for right now, because this is the critical championship match. Um, so, play Monopoly with Levy. I wouldn't mind playing Monopoly with, like, XQC, Hassan, and Moxie at some point. Um, okay, Bishop C6. I think Rook F4 wins. Bishop C3, of course, always is good. Bishop F2 probably is good. Bishop C2. I mean, every single move here is good. Uh, thank you to Yeah Buddy for the four, I Benedict for the tier one, and Zavasti for the prime. No, that wasn't a roast of Levy, but Monopoly, you need like five people, right? Monopoly, it's not just one other person. Monopoly, you need like multiple, uh, you need multiple people. XQ, XQC and Moxie don't work anymore. Oh, do they have some falling out? Ah, okay. Okay, Rook F4 played here by, by Wesley. Takes, takes, looks like game over pretty much. I think it's the bats for the 11. Okay, what is... I get... I mean, Magnus can trade takes takes, but I mean, you're just down a, You're down an op here. You have one less op, so it's pretty impossible to come back. Thank you to Adia Nika for the prime. Thank you so much. Rook D4 here. Okay, so now you just trade. Now you just trade and go... It's actually not so obvious. Trade. Like, if you trade and go, go like Bishop F2 here... Should be should be winning. Yeah, Bishop F2 here. Knight F5, and I guess... Take 6 isn't so clean, but it should be winning. There's also Bishop C2. And if takes, you take, and you win the knight, because it's pinned. And if black goes knight here, this must be winning. Bishop D4 must be winning. Yep, and Wesley plays Bishop C2, and Magnus will resign here. Magnus resigns, and we have a match. It is 1-1, and we will have Game 3 coming up very shortly. Very nice victory for... um. For, uh, for Wesley there. So let's pull up the other game. What do we have in this game? Okay, so Timor has been winning this game for a long time is what you guys have said. Um, wait, somehow this is... What was wrong here? Oh, Bishop D6 and E4 apparently is good because takes... What, you have E4 and you have multiple ways to create the battery here? Something like that. Um... Knight e4, it's still a little bit dicey, though. This knight is jumping every which way, and your king is a little bit iffy. I think you go knight e4 here. Still should be winning for still should be winning for white, but yeah. Yeah, these knights are coming in. Knight e4 is a move. Um looks scary. Knight e4 is the best move. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Yeah, I, I like knight e4 here. I mean, it's the only move that makes sense. Because if you get passive with knight b7, it's just it's too passive here. Update the score. Um, okay. Why not queen f2? Um, I think I can... Wait, why not queen f2? So that's a good question. Because now b6... Oh, queen f2 actually looks kind of interesting. Gypsy 494 maybe? b7... Check here and e three or queen f four. Maybe queen. Wait, no, queen f four. You just maybe here queen, and then you you go here and you have checkmate in two with the fossil. 
Maybe. I mean, a little, little bit hard to understand. He goes bishop e3. Oh, he's trying to he's trying to get he's trying to get the exact trick. He's trying to get the trick from the other order. He's trying to get this this order and win the game. He's trying to get this order. He's trying to be very sneaky with bishop e3. I like I like the idea, although apparently the computer doesn't like it. Maybe e4. Although how winning Wait, how winning is this endgame? Takes, 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 takes. Here, here. Uh, this is just winning because uh, you get the rook over, and then you push the pawn, and the king is cut, so this is actually winning. Is this best of three? It's, um, yeah, more or less it's best of three, yes. This is, um, whoa, holy mackerel, 40K watching. Thank you so much to all you guys who are watching. Hope you're having a fantastic uh, Monday morning, this long weekend. Hope everybody's doing very, very well. So queen e5 is a move here. Um, I like queen e5. Although bishop e3, it would have been, knight e4 was really neat and tricky. It's a shame that... Um, the Yon played bishop e3 because he probably it probably would have been very very complicated. Is the fridge empty? No, the fridge is not not empty at all. Uh, my all time record is 85k uh, for 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 viewership. Anyway, um, but yeah. So okay. So what's what's going on here? Um, what is going on here? What is going on? Let's see. Um, whoa! What the? Whoa! whoa what? What? Wait! What? Huh? Wait, what? Why did he sack? Okay, I'm... Yeah, Nani is right. Nani is exactly right. Like, what is what is this? I mean, is is this idea... I bet is, is... Does he have some... You know what's funny? If I can magically... Let me just set this up, you guys. If I can magically put the pawns here, black is almost drawing because the king is stuck in the corner. And the knight holds both pawns and the queen is distracted. So it's actually almost a draw here. So I don't know if that's what he's trying to go for. Some like really bizarre, bizarre way that he can hold this. Because the king is in the corner. And the knight covers and the queen is distracted by the pawn. So you can't really bring the queen in. Maybe he's going to go like king g7 or king h. One of these two squares. But this has to be lose. This must be losing. This must be losing. If, the, if, this, if this isn't losing... Um, I don't know what to say. Is this a fortress? Yes. But now I think G3 and just run the juicer in. That's why if you could get H4, F4 and glue the pawn to G2, it's winning. But you can't you can't get it, so now I just bring the king in, and this must be winning. He goes G4. <sighs> Still should be winning, but I'm worried about some H4 now, because now if you, you get the king too close, now black has double juicers. Tricky. I mean, it's obviously... Wait, but King G2, maybe F5? Ah, then you have B7 and takes his check. Almost, almost works. Although it's still very tricky. King F6 and King E6? Still tricky. No guarantees here. Did Timur drink one too many? No, I think Timur's doing okay. He's doing okay. Uh, Sessa says it's winning by moving the king to e2 like this. Yeah, but I mean, the thing is, how winning is this? Like here? Here, here? How winning is this? This might be winning, but the problem is black's going to get a blockade on the on the square in front of the pawn. So this is... I'm not sure Timur is going to win this game. I'm not 100% sure he's winning here. What do you think of people drinking during the games? What do you mean drinking? He's just drinking water, right? Wait, he's drinking beer? Wait. Wait, Timur is drinking beer? Are you serious? You guys are trolling, right? What is he drinking? I, I don't know what he's drinking. Okay, um... It may be tea. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so how winning is this? Like, knight b8? I mean, this is not trivial to win. 
Like, queen e8, g3, and you just plant the bishop on e5. Like, this is not easy to win at all. Knight b8, of course. Because now black, black, black blockades the pawn, and black can always keep the king close, close to the bishop. And black has a juicer running down the board. Like, I'm not sure that Timur is going to win this game. He was winning, but now it's very hard to win. King e7 takes, I guess. I mean, if black gets a king to c7, we have queen versus bishop and knight, potentially. I think a queen versus a bishop and a knight, if I remember correctly, it should be winning with perfect play. But in a blitz game, I don't think you're going to win with a queen against a bishop and a knight. That's what I would say. Um, but we'll see. Okay, let's just leave it here. Wait, wait, so... Jan did not go king e7, which I don't like. Wait, so takes... Okay, so Jan's idea here basically is he's going to sit on f5. So he's just going to sit with the king on these two squares, and then he doesn't have to move the knight or the bishop. Somehow this is winning, but I, I'm not quite sure how. So there's probably some Zugzvang. Some Zugzvang is my guess. This is going to be a draw? I don't know. I, I don't know if it's going to be a draw. There's some way that White can probably mop up the two pawns and run his king up the board, is my guess. There's probably some way, like, if you take off these two, White can bring the king up because the queen cuts the king somehow. Like, you can just march the king all the way up this to a7. But there's probably some some zugzwang here. Okay, queen g8 logical. So he's going to go king f5. Is this a threefold? It's not a threefold, but it's very, very close to a threefold. They had this... I mean, very close to a threefold here. Zugzvang. Zugzvang. Yeah. What? What's... Okay, so probably king g6. Yeah, logical. Thing, though, is that you have to be so careful that you never make the wrong check here. Like, even queen f8, king g5 might be a threefold now. Like, if you go here and here. So it's very, very tricky. White's not going to lose here, but... But it's very hard with only 10 seconds on the clock to win win in this position. So I, I don't know. I don't like queen g1, just king g5. Or king f5 here. What is a threefold? A threefold is when you reach the same position three times. Um, it's a win in 12. I see plus 5.5. There's some kind of Zugzwang, but my guess is it's like this, 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 and this. Because you need to force the pawn so you can run the king up. Probably this is how you Zugzwang him. That's my guess, at least. King f5 loses to queen h5. Yeah, well, I mean, that makes sense. Okay, now queen h Yeah, because the point is you need to force the juicer so that you can start moving your king up, probably. They had a kit, Kirk Carson for the prime, Frey Height for the prime, Bore, Boreo for the prime, Johnny 4000 for the three months. Okay, so he finds Queen H5. So G3 is the only move now. Why do you bop your head a lot off beat? Because I just like bopping my head. I mean, there's some way that you can you can win, but it's still very hard. So we're just gonna leave it here. I'm not really gonna I'm not really gonna say anything. Queen d5, king g6. Ah, king g6, king f3. Yes, and the king can no longer guard. Yes, yes, yes. Because now, if you go here, I just... Somehow you lose. And so you can't really guard. and Because now the queen covers and the king hits this. And your bishop gets stuck. And you're going to have to start giving up your juicers here. So now, Jan is going to try to run the king back. He's probably going to go, like, king here. And try to get the king over. Um, if he can. Yeah, king e7, of course. Yeah, he's going to try to get the king over here. Let's see. Let's see. Okay, king d3, knight d7, I assume. Knight d7 looks like the move. Um, he goes bishop. Oh, actually, this is okay, too. He wants to run the king over to c7. 
This still, this still, this should be winning, I think, because what you do is on this, you go here, here, and then you just play this, and it's Zugsvang. Actually, probably here, it's it's a Zugsvang, a better Zugsvang. Yeah, it's a better Zugsvang with Queen e4 or Queen g2. Yeah, this is definitely over. Um, although, actually, what's going to happen here is that, actually, what's going to happen is that we're going to get another position where he's going to go here. He's going to, like, check, and then he's just going to go, like, there's some Zugsvang. Maybe it's Queen g4. But there, there's some there's some way to Zugzvang, uh, uh black in this position. Okay, maybe now you can even go queen e8 to cut the king off further. Queen e8 I kind of like here. And then bring the queen to e4. That makes a lot of sense. So he goes g4. So king back. What is Zugzvang? It's when whoever's move it is, they lose. So you need to basically, if you're white, you need to be in a position where black's move loses. Black can't make a move without losing. Okay, so king e7 only move king c7, queen h7 wins, so you have to go back. What is uh, Volkswagen? Volkswagen is a car, you guys. I said Zugzwang, not Volkswagen. Anyway, um... Zugzwang, is, it's hard to listen to. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um... Yeah, all right. Um, okay. This is not a draw with correct play. It's definitely winning for white. Um, but we'll see. Okay, so what is... what is? Uh, okay, so Jan's going to keep waiting. So it's on Timur to find the win now. He goes... He's trying to go back and... He's going to try to get this way, I guess, somehow. Maybe. Very tricky still. But I think I think Timur is on the path to winning. <laughs> okay, in German your pronunciation is terrible. I know Volkswagen is right. That much I know is correct because Germans have told me that. Uh, but Zugzwang probably is wrong. Zugzwang, Zugzwang or something. I I don't know how you pronounce it. Anyway, um, yeah. <laughs> It's like as in cat, cat. Okay. It's like Suxfang or something. Okay, whatever. But I, I know the other one is right. I know it's it's Volkswagen. That that one I know. Anyway, black's gonna black's gonna lose here. You go like king e four or king e six. Both it basically it's you can you can checkmate on the white tiles because the knight is out of the out of the game here. So I think king e six and king e four both win. So probably king f six check and now king d5 and now it's it's black can't move you go here i go here if you go here i check if you push the juicer i check and collect great game from team war i mean maybe not the perfect technique at the end but he gets he gets it done thank you to duck on quack for the eight thank you chef ops for the for the um for the four months as well thank you so much to chef ops appreciate it thank you uh king c6 gg king c6 gg good good there we go all right So we, we get decisive games um, to start out both both days. Pretty pretty exciting. Um, all right, you guys. So on that note, since we're going to have a game starting pretty soon between Magnus and Wesley, um, I'm going to take a short break. And when I come back, uh, we'll cover the cover round three. It's going to be very, very exciting, though. Good day good day of chess. See you guys in a few. All right, you guys. What, what did we miss? Uh, they did start the game while I took my break. Okay, so d4, knight, f6 played here. Um, c4, e6. Okay, we have the same semi-trash here played by Wesley So again. CD5. So Magnus changes the previous game. Um, what did he play? The previous game, uh, he did something different. I think he played like E3 or something in the previous game. Maybe I'm wrong. But anyway, we have the semi trash here. So Queen D4 takes, E4 takes, Knight G5, trade, Bishop G5, castles. Magnus and Wesley played this in one of their previous uh, matches. I forget which event it was, but they did have this in a previous event. So it's not the first time they played this position. I think it made some returns for the gifted sub. Thank you to Wyvern for the four. Max Shadow Song with the Prime and a legit lizard with the uh, gifted sub. Thank you so much. No chance Wesley will lose this. Very unlikely. Um, it's a pretty dry position. So, so let's see. Update the scoreboard. The scoreboards, um, scoreboard should be correct, I think, unless I'm crazy. I think they're correct. Um, but they, they look correct to me. Okay, there we go. 
Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Um. Okay. So what? Is, whoa. What is this? So bishop c4, knight e5, takes, takes, king c2, knight f2, takes, and g takes. Is the idea to go rook d7 or something? It's some really weird idea, like knight d5, and you try to make a quick checkmate. Oh, Magnus has come up with a very tricky idea. So, computer says what? Knight d... Knight d1, rook d1 takes, and rook d7? Very tricky. Clock is frozen. Okay, I'll reload the page. Very tricky. Wesley should definitely think here, though. Um, but let's let, let's see what the... Um, what he's going to do. So, Bishop takes F6 played. Wesley's probably going to go into the deep tank here. Thank you, Turkish GM, for the four months. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, probably somehow Black has to give back the exchange. It's like takes, takes, takes. Rook D7, and somehow you give it back. I'm not sure how exactly you give it back, but somehow you give it back. Um, that's what I would say. Does intelligence have anything to do with being good at chess? I think you have to have a certain type of intelligence, like spatial awareness. But I wouldn't. I, w I would say there's certain specifics in terms of being good, being good at chess. But that doesn't that doesn't mean that you're like you're automatically like smart. You just have to have certain types of intelligence. Are people really betting on wins? It's going to just be four boring draws. I don't know. I mean, we can obviously check. Um, we can see what what what's the current current standing situation like. Um, okay, let's go back here. Okay, what do we have? What are, what are the what are the uh, what do we have? We have will Magnus win the win the FTX for two cup? He's still sixty eight cents. I'm still I'm still sitting on twenty seven percent profit um, at the moment. I think I'm holding it. I'm holding it. I'm in it. I'm in at fifty three cents. So I'm up twenty six point seven six percent. But I'm gonna be holding this one. Um, okay, Berlin's no, nothing else really. Um, this is the other one. Which see they're saying this is. Let, let me reload this one. Okay, so they're saying sixty is sixty cents that this will um, this will go to a tiebreaker. 40, per, 40, 40 cents say no. So sixty forty. I'm not going to be betting on this right now. I'm going to hold off on that one. Um, what else do we have? We have um, we have uh, well one or more of the ma one or more of these games start with a knight move. Okay, I think I'm going to take I'm going to take I'm going I'm going to bet on this. I'm going to bet on the uh, the no. Let's let's just let's just buy it. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to bet on the no because if Magnus hasn't played Knight F3 yet, I don't think Magnus is going to play Knight F3 in the match because he needs something sharper. So we're going to take the no. We're going to take the no on no on this one. Um, I think I think that's a fairly safe bet, not guaranteed, but I think it's fairly safe. So let's let's go back. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm someone tell Magnus to play Knight F3. Ha ha ha. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> Magnus will play just, so, but Magnus doesn't have white in the last game. Only, only, um, only Wesley does. Wesley's got white in the last game. So we'll see. The only way that I can see Wesley playing Knight F three, I guess in a tiebreaker, I could see Magnus playing Knight F three. But the only way I see Knight F three happening is is um is uh is if uh. No, they say begin with a knight move. So they mean with white. They say if white will start with a knight move. They don't mean with. They don't mean if black does. They mean if white does. So they mean like knight f three or knight c three. But I, I don't. I don't see Wesley doing it in the final game because Wesley's been crushing it with e four against Magnus. In fact, Magnus has had a lot of trouble against one e four throughout the the event. He had problems in e four against me. He's had problems with e four against Wesley. Um, so it's kind of it's kind of hard to see um, to see Wesley playing knight f three on move one. That's that's my rationale here. Um, but we'll see. No, knight f6 doesn't count, you guys. It's, it's white's move. Um, no guess. Someone said Anish is on chest 24. So if Anish is on chest 24, then, um, then so be it. My microphone is not clipping, you guys. Uh, we, we've been through, we were through this yesterday. It's not clipping. Um, I spoke to my mods, um, and, and people have said that, but it's not. So, all right. Um, let's see. So, bishop takes f6. I mean, knight d1 is the only move, I think, here that makes sense for black. Um, but we'll, we'll see what, what else is playable here. It's in your sweet spot, the microphone. Thank you. Appreciate it. Um, people want to troll totally. So he, he I opened the stream and he car shot, take the juice or my mom looked at me sus. <laughs> um, would I rather repine with Magnus or Wesley? Uh, pretty obviously it would be Magnus. Um, but yeah. Okay. Anyway, uh, thank you to Italian Goats for the tier one. 
I'm assuming Wesley will take on D1, but Wesley's going to be deep in the tank here. I, I don't I don't think we should expect any quick moves for, for quite some time. That's what I would say. Okay, so Wesley does take correctly. So Magnus takes, he takes. This, this still is 100% um, Magnus's prep at this point. So we're, it's going to be interesting to see. My guess is that Magnus has worked this out, knowing that it's going to be that it's going to be a draw at some point, uh, or that he's not in danger. But if Wesley finds all the right moves, it's a draw. So I think that's Magnus's rationale at this point, and it, it should be very interesting to see um, what the what the approach is here from um, from uh, from from Wesley. Thank you to Italian Goats again for the tier one. Thank you to Avic Amour for the Prime Milsad eighty nine for the tier one. Thank you so much. Why does the line show equal? Okay, let me turn it. Let me turn it back on. Uh, it says Rook D eight, Rook takes B seven, Rook D six, and then it says Bishop C four is zeros. Bishop D five is a move. It says Bishop D five and Bishop C four both draw basically. So that's that's the computer evaluation. Magnus was saving this for Jan. No, I, I doubt it. I think it made some returns for the gifted sub. Can you explain to me how my girlfriend who only knows basics can beat me, a 1,000 rated player that's been playing for half a year? Uh, because she's probably a better chess player than you, dude. That's why. Um, all right. So let's see. Um, will, will, <laughs> will Wesley play Rook D8 is the big question mark here. Okay. Um, okay, so Rook, B8's, Rook D8's played. Rook takes B7 played by Magnus. So it's all still prep. There's actually a very cute checkmate. If you play like E3, white can go bishop F7, and it's just checkmate. King has no squares here. So, um, so okay, so Rook D6 played by Wesley. Bishop C4 played by Magnus. Um, I guess this is still prep. I mean, Magnus is still moving instantly. So uh, it's on Wesley here. He's down seven minutes on the clock, but if he finds the right moves, he'll defend. But it's gonna be it's going to be difficult for sure. Prep? Yeah, this is 100% prep. 100% preparation. Thank you to Ama with the Prime. Thank you so much to Ama for the Prime. Thank you so much. So, I don't know if E3, Rook D4, both are moves. Um, not sure what... Not not really sure what... Um, what can Black really do here? What else besides Rook D4, E3? Although E3 looks sketchy because of Knight E4. I expect Wesley use a lot of time here. How many moves they are on move 20? So these first 20 moves have been all preparation by both players. Rook d4, bishop e6 is a draw. Oh no. Oh no. Is that really the line that the computer says? Oh no. Oh no, that's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. Again, that's also modern chess, though. That's that's a lot of what like modern chess, how how classical games go is. It's like you come to the board with one very specific idea, and you hope that your opponent can't figure it out. But here, Wesley only has ten minutes to figure it out. In a classical game, Wesley would have two hours here to figure out the right sequence, and he almost certainly would. So that's why classical chess is uh, has so many draws. Wesley's not going to play it. He may or may not. I, I think it's more. It's a lot less likely with ten minutes on the clock than if Wesley had two hours. I will say that much. Okay, so he plays f5, which is apparently not the best move, right, you guys? It's a blunder. Is this a blunder? Let's see. The bar is, bar is saying white's better now. Yeah. Bar, sa bar says it's not right. Yeah, bar says it's wrong. So, yeah, probably, um, yeah, just rook takes a7 and white's doing well. Again, big shout out to everybody who's watching. Hope you're having a fantastic uh, Memorial Day, enjoying the long weekend, getting that extra day off of work as we approach the summer. Hope you guys are all having a great morning. Thank you to Fitchy for the Prime. Thank you to Unworthy Olive for the Prime as well. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. So, um, not a blunder. Maybe blunder is too strong of a word, but rook d4 is apparently a draw, right? But see, now you're going to see Magnus go in the tank, which actually... It cuts both ways. So the the psychological game here is that Wesley knew that Magnus was in prep because Magnus moved instantly. So now when, when Wesley plays f5, 
Wesley knows that f5 is not the best move because if f5 was the best move, Magnus would have kept blitzing out more moves. So f5 is not the best move. So Wesley's like, uh-oh, I know I didn't play the best move, but if Magnus can't figure it out, then it's finally a human game here where both players have to figure out what the best moves are. So, yeah. I assume you take the juicer. Yeah, that, it's the, that's the meta um, of the game. And that's also, it's like, it cuts both ways. So it's like, when your opponent makes every move instantly, it's frustrating because you're annoyed. It feels like you're not playing a human. It's like, you know, this computer moves. At the same time, like, you know that their instant moves means you're playing the absolute best move. So it can give you confidence as well. It goes both ways. Am I mad? Yeah. Uh, I'm betting that, my, my bet here is that probably... My bet here, here's my bet, you guys. My bet is the following. Magnus probably knew rook d4. He had a draw or maybe king b3 based on how long Wesley uses to play the move. Probably Magnus looked at e3, and that's probably it. I bet the two moves he looked at were rook d4 and e3 because they're the top two computer moves. Um, so he didn't look at f5, but now it's um, now it's uh, it's on Magnus to find a move. And the more time that Magnus uses to think here, the more confident Wesley can become. Why am I mad? I'm mad? I don't think I'm mad. I'm just chilling, having a great Monday morning. So, um, I feel wonderful today. I, I feel really, really good. Rook a7, king d8, b, b4, cessus says plus 0 0.7. Uh-huh. Yeah, you guys. Actually, no. You know what? The reality, I'm really, really mad because we only have we only have 45,000 people watching us right now. And we were like 40,000 short of our all-time record. So, I'm very mad about that. I'm very mad. Um... <laughs> Okay. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. So, okay. Let's 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 keep going. Anyway, um, <laughs> yeah. So, um, react harder. Totally. Uh, so Magnus takes on a seven. Uh, TSM does not have a house, you guys. So uh, T what TSM has um, is they have a facility now. That they, I think that when they first, when the org first started out, they did have a house, um, or they had like a house or houses, but they went to the facility model. Um, so they don't, they don't have, a, they don't have a house anymore. A warehouse is a house. Okay. Why is King D8 the best move? Because the computer says it's the best move, and computers are stupid. But you know what the problem is here is um, what else does black have when you look at it? Like, you're kind of stuck. You can't go rook d7 because of bishop b5. You can't really move this rook anywhere. You can't move either of the rooks kind of. So you're kind of stuck here. Yeah, king d8 actually makes sense because you're just stuck. You have, like, no other moves. Bishop e7, d8 was also an idea. But the problem for black here is that white has two passed pawns that can march up the board very, very quickly. Maybe b4 here. b4, rook c6, king b3 makes a lot of sense to protect everything. And you just, you, you got to get the pawns rolling. a4 looks kind of wrong somehow because now the bishop covers b4. I think b4 is the right move. Maybe rook a5 is also an idea to hit the pawn on f5. Not sure. But yeah, we'll see. B4, Rook, D7 is a draw, but I mean, I'm, it's more about finding a move for white here. It's just not easy to find a move. Uh, the E and F pawns are strong, but they're not free to march. So so, so just as an example, let's just say we get this position even. You can't really push the pawn. You can't push, sorry, you can't push the pawn forward because it's guarded. And even if you push this, this white pawn stops. So your pawn, your pawns really are kind of stuck on these two squares. So even though the pawns are fast, potentially, they're kind of blockaded in an unhappy way. That, that's, that's, that's my take, at least. It's kind of hard to do anything here. Uh, you could also, if you, you problem though, is you can't really do this one. I mean, disregard the position, but you can't do that because you lose this. So if you could get some position like this, for example, the pawn is very fast getting down the board, but you can't really do that because you can't push this because you lose it. And if you push this, you can't create the F pawn anymore because like now your pawn's not here to take. So now the squares are blockaded. So it's very, very tricky here for black as well. Refresh the other board. Has the game started? Um, sure. Let's see. The other game has started. Let me refresh it. Yeah, the the other the other game I think has started. Let me go here. Yeah, the other game has started. 
So, okay, so rook a8, which apparently is a bad move for the computer. I don't know why, but apparently it's a bad move. So, okay, so what else? Um... So king e7, g4, I guess, is that the idea? I mean, or is the idea just to try to run this bad boy up the pawn, like a4, a5, a6, a7? I don't know. We'll see. Wesley can win here. Oh, Wesley definitely could win. I mean, if Magnus gets careless here, I could definitely see Wesley winning. King e7, knight d5, maybe with a draw. I mean, I think that it's still within margin where white can white can definitely hold the game, but it's it's complicated, very very complicated. Why so many viewers? Uh, people love chess. It wasn't a fad, as we proved with the multiple booms that happened already in 2020. It's not a fad. Chess is here to stay. Uh, King c7 allows knight b5 with a fork. So king e7 makes sense. Um, I mean, maybe just knight e5. Maybe you just roll a bad boy. b4, a4. Ah, but you can't. Because if you go b4, there's a very dirty rook d2 check. And it's like, okay, free rook. But when you take, I fossilize you with bishop h6. And now I collect the rook. And now black is definitely on the right side. Very, very tricky. Very, very tricky. How do gifted subs work? Uh, gifted subs, uh, there's just an algorithm that I think more or less randomly just gives subs if you if you give subs. So, ooh, so Magnus actually has to be very careful because this is a very big threat. Because um, if you if you lose the rooks, then then this black rook and these pawns are very very powerful. So this is a very big threat here. How are you supposed to see this? I think it's possible um, to see it. It doesn't seem insane to me. Also, you guys, those of you who are tuning in, if you haven't already, make sure to hit that follow button as well. Um, uh, you'll be notified when we go live, when we cover big events and, and things of that nature. So make sure to hit that follow button if you have not already hit it. Or, sorry, clicked it. My, my mistake. Um, all right. Anyway, uh, many money moves, money moves. How's the other game going? We have it on the small board. Um, it looks looks pretty balanced so far. Knight d5 stops that from, from happening. Yeah, knight d5 does stop it from happening. Or wait, sorry, not bishop d5. Knight d5. I mean, I actually like knight d5. I think it's a very thematic move here, and I kind of would I kind of would be surprised if Magnus doesn't play it. Oh, uh, the viewer record is uh, 85,000. So we're, we're not setting a viewer record today, but we're very grateful that there's so many people who love chess. Um, and it's been a while since we have 50,000 people watching, but thank you so much to all you guys for watching and enjoying the show. I really do appreciate it. Uh, what's a thematic move? Knight to, knight to d5 is a thematic move. That's that's the uh, thematic move. So um, so knight d5 makes, makes, makes a lot of sense here. When is the chess two announcement? Um, I don't know. Apparently, okay, so Magnus apparently has made another big mistake. I guess the idea is king f6, you have g4 to lever the pawn, and you can't trade because if you if you trade if you trade the uh, pawns on g4 for e4, you get forked and lose the rook. Like takes takes, and that's losing. And otherwise, I'm just going to eat the juicer with my rook and the pawn connecting. So it's actually tricky. It still remains very tricky. I mean, if rook f6, you also get forked. So you can't guard with the rook. King f6 and you, you'd lose, probably. Um, which means you probably have to move the rook to like d4 is my guess. Rook d4 makes sense. Maybe b3, although there's still bishop h6 and rook d2. Still very tricky. Wesley is winning on eval. Why is Wesley winning, you guys? Should I turn the turn the lines back on or something? You know, I don't care for the prime. Thank you so much. I don't care. Appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, let's see. Let's turn on the lines. Computer says rook to c6 is apparently winning. B3 and king f6 now because if you go g4, I can just eat the juicer and there's no uh, there's no fork here of the king and the rook. The rook is, is on c6, not d6. So apparently that's very good for black. Let's see if Wesley can play rook c6. Rook c6 by Sessa. Okay. Good move. You excited your position from the poly market. Um, no, well, that was on, um, that was on, that was on whether, uh, whether there would be a tie break. So it's not, it's not necessarily this, it was not necessarily correct, but, but it's still, it's still tricky. It's tricky. I, I think those odds are going to swing a lot in, in, in the, in the next like five moves is what I would say. Okay. He plays Bishop H6, which is 
a move, not best apparently, not the best move, but very, very logical to go rook d2. Um, you know, it's a classic, classic right triangle, of course. 90 degrees. Um, there's maybe knight d5 here. Actually, knight d5 makes sense because now I can fossilize you with this check and now I collect the juicer. Tricky, very, very tricky position. Also, I think it's very likely Magnus will play the checks. If you take rook d2, somehow, I don't know, somehow this looks very scary. Like, this e-pawn is fast. You're losing both the juicers on the king's side. It looks kind of scary. Nepo Raj is crazy. Yeah, but this, this is for the final. So, like, we should keep it here for now. So, knight d5, I mean, seems like the move to me. Rook f5 maybe is playable, although I feel like it's way too dangerous to play in this situation. Why are you calling pawns and pieces juicers? Because as we say, XQCL. Um, all right. So I think knight d5 is move. I know that was a terrible heart, but anyway, I think you guys get it. So um, so yeah, so knight d5, knight, knight d5, Magnus plays it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so knight d5 played here by, by Magnus. Um, do I still think Magnus is going to win the tournament? I think he's still, it's still, it's very close to 50-50 right now is what I would say. All right. Um, I know I just jacked the music up, but I'll, I'll put it down a little bit in a second. Okay, King D7, Rook A7 wins for White. King D8 loses. So here, check. Here is, is checkmate. If here, this is checkmate. And then if you go to if you go here, this you, you lose the juicer. If you go here, you lose the juicer. If you go here, it's probably something White can do, but. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Sessa says king f7. Okay. It's a tricky position for both sides here. Very tricky position. So, um, Wesley down to 350. Very, very tight, tight situation here. <laughs> Blow the speaker up, Max. No, nah, I think we're good. We're good. So, uh, okay, there's king e8. The moves that I see, you have one, two, three. Basically, it's one of these three squares. King e8 looks optically wrong, so this check. So my ins my my instinct says you have to go to one of these two, and we'll just see which one he goes to. Can I show the king f7 line? I mean, I assume king f7 is this. So I, based on by by the process of elimination, king f8 is the move that I would play here. It's it's just by process of elimination, king f8 is what I would do here. That's what I would do. Whoa, he goes king f7. Let me turn the music down a little bit. Um, because now there's an ID3 check. So I'm kind of surprised he went to f7. Um, ID3 is the only move here that I see. Let's see. Will Magnus play knight e3 is a big question. King f7 was best. No, this apparently is a draw with correct correct, uh, correct play. So I, I'm guessing knight e3 is what I would play here. Knight, knight e3 seems like the logical move to collect the juicer. Also, it reduces a lot of the risk because with only these two pawns, black can never win the game anymore. Uh, the best black can do is probably draw. Thank you to Rosaru with the prime. Thank you so much to Rosaru. Appreciate it. Thank you. f7 and e8 were both equally good. Yeah. Probably knight e3 here. I would play knight e3, personally. So, I don't know what else you can really do here besides knight e3. Rook a7, maybe? Maybe. No, I think knight e3 is forced. I don't know why why uh, Magnus is thinking so long here. Because to me, it seems like the only, only logical move. Check king f6 doesn't make sense. Um, check just here doesn't make sense. Yeah, you have to go knight e3. It's the, it's the only logical move. Yeah, I would just play knight. Yeah, and, and Magnus does play. I, I'm hard-pressed to find any other move that makes sense. b4 also. Yeah, but b4, I mean, it just feels sketch. There's rook c8. There's e3. It feels a little bit sketch. All, I mean, maybe b4 is fine, but it's just it feels sketch. Knight e3 feels like the, it feels like the natural human move. But maybe it's it's possible. It just it feels too sketch to me. 
But I'm, I'm only human. Computers, of course, probably say it's completely fine. Okay, knight f5. I assume rook d2, king c3. Important that you can't take, though, because then you get forked. So there's probably some trick in here. So king c3. You don't take, obviously. You get forked. The king is kind of safe here. Like, let's say black goes rook d1. King is kind of safe here, I guess. Check king g5. King is, king is surprisingly safe. Okay, rook f2. Thank you to Dobrowin for the prime. Thank you so much, Dobrowin. Appreciate it. Rook d8 was the best move. Yeah. One wrong check and you lose, pretty much. Okay. I mean, maybe you can trade. But these two... But Black's pawn on e4 is so fast that White's not going to get the two bad boys rolling up to a8 and b8 here. So... So it's too tricky. Nepo game is stuck. Oh, sorry. Nepo game is stuck. Oh, let me reload it. Knight h6, king h6, and rook e5. Yeah, but I mean, I would assume that after takes, 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 with an outside juicer that's free to go down the board, like, you're just going to go, like, a4. I Somehow I feel like this is fine. Like, I don't know. You have one, two, three, four, five, and six moves to win the game because you have the two towers supporting the pawn, one from in front and one from behind. So I think the two towers will be able to force the pawn down the board to win. Just my guess. Just my intuition. <laughs> the two towers, yes. I do think I do think Magnus will take on H6, though. I think he'll take. They do Andrew and Gibson for the eight months. You mean the towers in, in Baradur and Isengard? Okay, um... I mean, knight h4 is actually very bad here, apparently. You probably are supposed to take um, take on h6. Oh, or thank, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or thank, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, um, I guess we're waiting to see what Magnus does here. Thank you to Swagopotamus Rex for 17 months. Thank you so much, Swagopotamus Rex. I, I still think this is likely to be a draw. That's my guess. I still think it's it's on the edge of being a draw. But it, re it remains complicated. Why is Timor so low on time? Um, probably because Jan is just moving instantly every move is my guess. What else is coming up this week? Uh, we have Title Tuesday tomorrow. We have our attempt to set the world record for most bullet games one in one hour. We're doing that in, in uh, partnership with Stella Artois, um, the, the, the beer maker from Belgium. Um, we also have G Fuel Arena Kings coming up on Wednesday, so we have a lot of stuff coming up. Yeah, Stella Artois. Mm -hmm. So knight h6, king h6, bishop d5 is maybe a move, um, but not, not, not necessarily what I would suggest. During which event did I have 80k? Um, I'm not actually sure. Not 100% sure. But anyway, um, yeah, I, I guess why I can take on h6. I mean, what is Magnus? Let me think about this from a human perspective. There's knight h6. There's knight e7. There are only two moves that really make sense as far as I can see it. And so he picks this one. King f6 is a move, I suppose. But it, it gets iffy. The, the, the pony is jumping all over the place. There are all kinds of forks here. So a little bit sketchy. Maybe king g7, knight, knight f5 is just a draw. Not sure. They could just repeat. Yeah, you could get this, 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 I guess. I hope we don't get it, but we could get that. Could get that. I think it's actually not insane. Thank you to Hammock for the prime. Servitos for the prime. Thank you so much. Okay, so now the pony is going to start jumping. Although black can still sit on G6 here. So there still are other ways this can end up in a draw as well. Yeah, so th those of you guys who are wondering what the record was, it was 84,403 on March 16th, 2021, when Levy, Anna, Jordan, Van Force were doing commentary of a game of mine against um, against Magnus, uh, against Magnus Jan Nepomniachtchi during the Magnus Carlsen Invitational. The most subs ever was 13,609, and of course, um, the most bananas that I ever ate on stream was five in January of 2021. So those are those are the stats, you guys. Okay, so 97 King F6, 95 played here. Um uh let's see what um what <laughs> what wesley's gonna do here yeah we want six i don't have bananas here i might have a banana in my bag but i don't i don't have six bananas 
Anyway, uh, potassium overload, true. True story. All right. Okay, so king g7 plays now. Maybe rook a7. I mean, you have to be careful because otherwise you get skewered from behind by the rook and the bishop. So you have to check. And probably we're just... I think we're headed for another draw here. I think we're headed for a draw, is my guess. I think we're headed for a draw. I think we're going to get rook a7. And we're going to get a draw here in the third game. Thank you to extra tar tar for the prime. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Is time a big problem for Wesley? Um, not really. I, I wouldn't say it's a big issue. I think there's going to be a draw here. I mean, B4 is maybe playable here. Am I coaching XQC tomorrow? Um, not as far as I know. Thank you to Sarcam for the prime. Um, for some reason, it looks scary for Black. Yeah, it looks scary. But the thing is, the good news for Wesley is he just says his idea is Uno. His idea is Uno, Dos, Tres, Cuatro. And... Um, and he's and then he just wins the game. So because he has a very clear cut idea, that's why I don't think that this is going to be. Um, I don't think this is going to be that complicated for him. XQC says that I'm coaching him soon. Wait, what? That's a joke, right? Or is, did he say something? You're 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 troll. I think you're debating me, right? <laughs> I think you're debating me with that. Yeah, you guys are just debating me. Yeah, okay. Um, anyway, all right. <laughs> okay. So let's see what, what is, uh, what is Magnus going to play here? I think he's going to go rook a7, rook a6. That's my guess. Seems like the safest way to play. I think Dr. Zoldberg for the two months. Hey, Re Reverend Patrick for the $3. Eat the banana. If I have a banana, I'll eat it. I don't know if I have a banana in my bag, though. Um, I'm not sure. It'd be great if you coach him. Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's been, a, it's been quite a while since he's played some chess, but... Um, but anyway, uh, I'm sure he'll get back to it uh, before Pog4. Did I coach pro players? No. no. And unfortunately, we're headed for a draw here. Big draw after rook a6, I think. Very very good play by Wesley, though. He saves it. It felt like a little bit dicey out, out of the opening. But he plays he plays some very good moves. Bishop h6, rook d2. Good defense. And he's going to save the game. And he's going to draw it. So he's going to have white in game four, the final game. And um, and he's going to have a chance to, to be, be, be the hero. They had a Herman for the, or a uh, Hernan, sorry, for the four months. They had a Hernan. I appreciate it. Do I know any Russian words? Yes. Sto, uh, dasvidanya, ich tiri. What else do I know? Ya um, tibia lublu. What else do I know? I think that's good enough already. It's good enough. Anyway. Okay, so we're case seven. I guess King G... Okay, we have a draw. Official draw here. Official draw. Um, and so the match is tied one and a half, one and a half now. Okay, so let's go to the other game between Jan and Timur. I haven't looked at this game at all, so I'm not really going to look closely. Although the opening looks... Uh, opening looks kind of really weird. Okay. Both players kind of violating a lot of rules. Um... Okay. Okay, wild game. Jeez. Wild game. Probably going to be a draw with Rook G4, Rook F3, Rook G3 is my guess. Thank you to Pinhao for the two months. Thank you so much to Pinhao. Appreciate it. Thank you for the two months, man. Oh, the clock stopped. Okay, let me reload the clock. Yeah, if you're a super GM, you violate the rules. This is definitely true. Um, I would say if you're a super, if you're a GM, what you learn is you learn how to break all the rules. You learn like you learn a thousand rules, and then you learn how to break every single rule. That's that's what you learn. That's basically that's basically what chess is. If you if you're really good at it, you learn all the rules, and then you learn how to break all the rules. Which is why computers are better than humans because they never have this fear. They never have it instilled in them that like there are these rules in the first place. So they're not breaking any rules. There's no like there's no taboo. Nothing is wrong with like playing H four on move one at all. So that's why um, so that's why computers have it much easier because for us as humans, we spent many many years um, learning the basics, studying, and you learn rules, things you do, things you don't do. The computer never learned that you don't do this um, basically. Can you skip the first step and break the rules from the beginning? No, because you kind of need the rules to get good. And then you learn where you can break the rules. Computers just know how to do it from the get-go. 
Anyway, it seems like a good time to take a, take a break before the last game begins. So I'm going to take my short break right now uh, before the final game between Wesley and Magnus, and we'll be right back. I'll leave it right here, though. All right, you guys, we're back. So what did I miss in the meantime? Did I miss anything special? Okay, nothing too crazy. Uh, Jan is about to win this game, it looks like. Um, there's bishop g5, rook f6. Uno, dos, uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco. Uno, dos, tres, cuatro. So white has an extra pawn. So probably bishop g5 and rook f6 is winning for white here. Thank you to Gavin Rosenberg for the four months. Thank you so much to Gavin Rosenberg. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. I missed a good joke. What was the joke? I missed a joke somewhere. Did I, I miss a joke? Okay. <laughs> All right. Anyway. Um, okay. White has an extra juicer here. So white should be doing pretty well. Um, would I take a... Would I take a draw if my opponent misclicked in a dead draw position? Um, most likely, yes. It would that would be tested if it was like the final game, of like a finals match. But but in general, I would I would um, I would just take a draw, of course. What do I gain from being with TSM? Um, well, first of all, I'm paid a paid a salary for being a member of TSM for streaming under their banner. Um, that's the first thing. Additionally, uh, you know, having access to the facility here where they have um, they have a gym, they have a wellness center. Um, and having the opportunity to collaborate with a lot of the other TSM members um, is very important as well. So those those are probably the biggest benefits. Yeah, so there are there are a lot of benefits. Thank you to Orphe JWSC for the tier one. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Have I met Wardell? No, Wardell's in Wardell's in Canada, isn't he? Thank you to the whole Peter for the four months as well. Thank you so much. Okay, Rook C two, probably Bishop G five and Rook C Rook F seven. I mean, this should just be winning. I assume check like eat. Check. You can't come up because I check you and collect the juicer. Um, so you have to go back and then I go over. I mean, this should be winning, I would assume. I think you just, this is just bye bye birdie here. The H pawn runs runs up the board. Is it possible for me to qualify for the tour final since his last major? Actually, most likely I will qualify for the um, for the tour final because um, because. Uh, the uh, the three winners from the majors make it in, and then I believe there are um, then it's like the next five players by tour standings, and the three players who are going to win the three major events are all ahead of me on points. So I'm I'm currently number six in the standings, and and that means that I'm in three out of five, and there are only two players who are behind me who come close, and additionally there are also two wild cards. So um, almost certainly I will I will qualify. Okay, Bishop E one, I think Bishop H four and Bishop F six maybe. Although it's still tricky H. Six doesn't quite win. Still tricky. Do other orgs pay salaries to streamers? Yes, they do. As far as I know. Where is Timur from? He is from Azerbaijan. Um, uh, that is where Timur is from. Man, he has access to all these cool facilities while I live in my mother's basement. Uh, everyone starts somewhere in life, man. No worries. You'll 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 you'll, do, you'll you'll be fine. Wait, H6? Uh what was A5 A5? Okay, this is um this is this this is where I want to rant. This is where it's like this is where I want to rant because it's so frustrating to watch these games, and like I, no one, no one makes this kind of blunder against me. But then Timur randomly just blunders H six H seven out of nowhere here. So frustrating, so frustrating. Look at the time. Yeah, I mean time is low, but Bishop D two is I thought very very obvious. I mean the only thing White has is H six H seven Bishop F six. So um, yeah, thank you, Pasa Beatty, for the two months. Thank you so much. Yeah, I mean, Timur just loses. I, I don't. I don't even know what I'm supposed to say. No, I'm not salty. I'm. I'm. Off. I just find it. I just find it funny. That thing is though that happens a lot. It's like I said this yesterday too. It's like you watch the game and you see blunders that like never happen in your games, and it's so easy to be like, I mean, what is this? Like, how does it happen? But anyway, Jan wins, which means uh, my prediction's looking pretty good now. I think. Okay, so let's leave it on Wesley versus Magnus for game four. Um. See what are what are we at right now? Let's let's see what are what are what are we at? What are we at? Um, we'll win the match between uh, Timur and Jan. I'm looking very very. Oh wow, they put Jan at 88 cents here. Wow, 88 cents that Jan is going to win the match. 
I'm looking pretty good. I got in. I got in at 45 cents, so I'm up 96, percent which is almost as good as AMC. Um, it's not. It's not. It's it's not quite there yet, but it's also probably safer um, as an investment. I don't know. Anyway, yeah. Well, um, 88 feels too high. I think that's. I think that's that's overvalued. But if Jan is a favorite in Jan is a favorite also in tie breaks. He's a favorite in tie breaks and and he is black in game four. I mean, I could cash it out. Cashing out would be the smart play, probably. But I, I think I'm gonna. I, I think there's, there's too much on the. I think, I think, I think I'm, I'm holding for my 12 percent, as Gordon Gecko would say. Um, greed, for lack of a better word, greed is good. So I'm gonna hold out for my extra twelve percent. All right. Um, okay. So I guess, I guess the Wesley game should start, um, should start sooner. So, uh, so we'll just leave it here for, for now. All right, game four start. We have e four for Magnus, which is very important. Important, you guys, because that means that uh, most likely we're not going to get knight f three on move one, which was my other, which was my other YOLO bet. So we're probably not going to get. We, we're probably not going to get a knight. Oh, are we going to get tie breaks though? Oh, we're going to get tie breaks. We're going to get tie breaks. Okay. Okay, we're going to get tie breaks here. So maybe I'm in maybe I'm in bad shape. Maybe Magnus will play knight f3 now. But we'll see. How do you have 1 million followers but 50k viewers? Um do you mean that in a good way or a bad way? I don't know what you mean by that. It happens. People love chess. Okay, so this is going to be a draw. Okay, so this game is a draw, um, which means that we're gonna, we're gonna wait for the tie break um, tie break games to pop up as well. So this is two two, um, which means we now get a uh, we're we're gonna get another pause, I guess. Ah, Wesley bet on tie breaks. Yes. Oh, and actually, you guys, I was smart. I cashed that out, right? I cashed that out before it got to tie breaks. Very smart by me. Very very smart. Because I would have I would have lost that bet. I would have lost that bet for sure. Um, Let's see, did it go to 99 cents? Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Look at that. Look at that. Yep. Smart. Very smart by me to cash that out. Um, Yeah. Yeah, because I, I think I, I took my 6% on that. I took my 6% because I wasn't feeling good about it. I wasn't feeling good. So I made the right decision because I, that opening position was bad for Magnus. I should get in the stonks business. I'm in the stonks business anyway. But, um, but yeah, okay, good, good, good decision um, by me to cash that out. So really, the, there, there are only a couple of open, open bets remaining. Magnus is still. What is Magnus? He's still 66 percent, 66 percent to win the whole thing. It was really high after he won game 179, back to 66. So we'll see. Oh, Timur plays... Oh my gosh, I almost had a heart attack. Timur plays Knight F3. For a second, I thought this was Magnus' game. <laughs> for a second, I thought this was Magnus' game with Knight F3. I got really scared there for a second. Okay. But yeah. Um, okay, so... Why scared? Because I made my uh, my other my other one. My other one, you guys, was that I um, I bet against... I bet against a Knight F3 being played on move one. It was... Um, yeah, there, there was this one, you guys. I bet on this one. This is the one that I bet on. I I, I, I took the gamble here. Um, well, one or more of the FTX finals between Magnus and beginning of the night move. So that's that's why, you guys. So anyway, let's see. So probably Timor will trade and go Bishop G2 here. Pretty standard so far. Is Wesley better than Magnus in Rapid? I think Magnus just he's had problems against a lot of players in, in Rapid. What if Magnus is watching and plays Knight of Three to scam me? Hey, I mean, I would think that he's playing. He's playing for a lot of money in first prize, so I don't think he wants to gamble. Bros, don't you think the first match between Raja and Nepo is some form of match fixing? No, I mean, I don't think either of them wanted to play. Is what I would say. I don't think either of them really wanted to play. Okay, so white can take with the pawn or the queen. Pawn takes bishop before king f1. I think it's an old line. Um, but we'll see. 
Am I watching or playing? I'm watching the finals. We're we're uh, we're doing commentary and covering the final final matches uh, of this FTX Crypto Cup. Um, two matches, semifinal match for the consolation match: Jan Homniachi and Timur Rajbov, and then the champions match between Wesley Carls um, la, 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 between Wesley So and Magnus Carlson. Um, so that's that's what we're doing. All right. So um, clock is not running. Okay, let me reload it. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> All right, okay. Yeah, all right, um, okay. Thank you to the Chess Mediac with the Prime. Thank you so much, appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you to AKD707 for the five. Leonardo for the tier one. Thank you so much to Leonardo. Appreciate it. Why do they even play for third place? They, they don't even care anyway. Um, I think it's just like, it's just the nature. Um, I mean that you, you just, it's a, it's a way of keeping it, keeping it fresh, having, having four players in the event and going from there that, I mean, I, I don't love the idea either, frankly, but, but yeah, that's, that's how they do it. Read all the comments in chat. No, I think, I think we're good for right now. Actually, let me put um let me put the other game on the small board so that I at least know when it starts. Okay. Actually, let me put it here. The Twitch resolution keep, resolution keeps dropping. Cars breaking Twitch server. I don't think so. I, I'm I mean not as far as I can tell. When will the game start? Probably in about 10 minutes is my guess. It's not going to be starting anytime soon. So, yeah. Anyway, um, okay, let's see what's happening. So here, probably, white can play a5, white can castle, go bishop d2, etc. Not really sure. But... Anyway, um, still a lot of fun. What, why, why am I back in LA? Uh, I like LA. First of all, I want to be close to family. Many reasons. How many push-ups can I do? I could do. I did forty the other day, um, but I, I don't. I don't do push-ups every day. Okay, so let's see. So a five is a move. Bishop e three is a move. Castle is a move as well. A lot, lot of options here um, in this position. Would I castle or play king e2? Uh, the idea here is to go like bring the king up to like e2 and e3 and then just play rook c1 and argue that your central pawns are better than the two pawns versus the one pawn on the uh, on, on the queen side. Thank you, Sagey Mage, for the gifted sub. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Only 40 rookie numbers? That's true, I guess. That's not bad, though, for my age. I don't. That's not bad for my age, though, at this point. I mean, when I was younger, like when I was like 20, 21, I think I was 21 in 2008. Yeah, like when I was 21, 22, I could do like 55 to 60. But I mean, you lose muscle and all, all other things as you get older. So probably King D2, Rook C1, Rook, Rook, uh, Rook C3. I'm only 26, yeah. Yeah. Actually, at 26 isn't... At 26, shouldn't, if you're in good condition, shouldn't you be able to do, like, 50-plus if you're 26? Unless I'm mistaken. <laughs> well, I can do 76 push-ups. Good for you, man. Good for you. I just know it drops off. Like, when you're, like, 20, when you're 20, you should be able to do a lot. 25 is still high, but I think as you hit 30, it just the curve, it just goes down really fast. Anyway, um, let's focus on the chess. We're here for chess, not for, um, not for, uh, not for, um, 
Not for a... This isn't like a fitness and exercise Nick Merck stream. Okay, so Rook A3, which would be 7, King D2, played by Team War. Probably Yawn will go like King E7, D7 is my guess. Something like that. I think King D7 and Rook C8 looks logical. King E7 and Rook C8 also fine. At 42, Jack Land did 1,033 push-ups. Good for him. Thinking Manolo for the prime. I mean, that dude was a beast. Didn't that dude do like... Didn't he like swim when he was like 80 or something across like the bay? Just insane. That dude was insane. Anyway, um, okay. So let's see. So... Probably Rook C1, I'm guessing. Probably Rook C1. That makes the most sense. Maybe A5. Maybe King E3. One of those three moves is my guess. I think you should try to say my name backwards for the nine months. I think someone should try to say my name backwards for nine months. Okay, goes Rook B1. Okay, logical move also to play for A5. Try to play on this uh, queen side here. King e3, I mean, you still want a5, no b5, so that you open up this uh, diagonal with the trade or when you take. My shirt does not have enough colors in it. Oh, I'm sorry, you guys. Probably why you should go king e3 to guard. If you go here, there might be e5 or f5. So I don't like that. Um, king c3 allows a check. So king e3 seems like an obvious move to me. Seems like an only move almost. That's my guess. Who do I favor in so versus Carlson? Um, toss up. But I, I, I think the I think the temporary odd pro odds probably are in Magnus's favor. Because um, because Wesley kind of didn't try to beat him in the final game with White. So I think I would give a slight psychological edge to Magnus because of that last game. Very, very slight. Okay. Game has started. All right. Well, I'm going to have to step out for one second. <laughs> <laughs> I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. B4 played by Magnus. Great first move. I love it. I love it. I was gonna say they should have had that as a prop, but will we see the orangutan? They they should have they should have they should have had that on, on the um they should have had that on the uh, on the on on Polymark. They should have had that as a instead of Knight F three. They should have had B four. Magnus the Toxic. Well, I mean B four is a fine move. I mean it's not a bad move. Clocks are frozen again. Let me refresh it. Sorry. No, but the thing also is psychological. Psychologically, the problem is that like you feel really, it's like you, you like in your mind, you're like, just don't lose. Just don't lose. Because if you lose the game, you look like a total, total idiot. Like if you lose to the orangutan. So that's why it's very, very psychologically difficult. Because it's like in your mind, you're just like, I'm just, I can't lose this opening. I can't lose to this. So it's like it also starts to mess with your mind because then it's like your whole thought process gets warped a little bit. Thank you to MF Kilgore for the three months. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Nepo on the small board. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah. It's frozen. Let me refresh it. So probably A3 makes the most sense here. Of course, black is completely fine here in the opening, um, without a doubt. It's 
So he does go A3. So probably C5 makes sense or A5 makes sense. Doesn't West have a better chance of rap than Blitz? I think it's very mixed. I think it's possible in both. Um, remember, it's five minutes with three second increments, so it's very slow. It's not. Um, it's not super fast. Magnus have a four bond cloud. Um, okay, Bishop d six played here. Probably Knight c three, maybe d four e four. I think Knight c three and Castle seems most logical to me. Do I know the theory? I mean, I know I know it's playable, but it's it's just playable when you play the game of chess. It's not like it's winning for black or anything. Why the orangutan? Probably Magnus is just tired. He's probably just tired. Okay, go, does go a5, so probably c5 here. And then knight d2 at some point is my guess. All right, you guys, I'm going to have to run out very briefly. I know it's bad timing, but I do need to do something. So I'll, I'll be right back in one second. I'm sorry. I'll literally run and be right back. Bro. Give me just a minute. All right, you guys, what happened? What did we miss? Sorry about that. Sorry, you guys. Okay, what did I miss? Okay. Okay, C5, Bishop, 7 Castles, Castles, Knight, D2, B6, Trade, Rook, C1. Looks pretty balanced still. Wesley's got a riot look on his face. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, Rook B1 played probably at some point C5, trade off the B for C pawns, and it should probably should be should be a draw. Thank you to Real Madrew for the prime. Thank you so much to Real Madrew. Will Rajabov squeeze the Rook end game? I haven't looked at that game. Um, I think he has good chances to squeeze it, yeah. Okay, so probably knight f6, knight b3. It's getting a little bit tricky for um for Wesley here, maybe. If white can grip c5, like d4, knight c5, white should be much better. Not another draw, one can hope. One can hope. But there's also d4 here in knight e5, knight b3. Should be a draw, but it's a little bit iffy for black here. Now, you can't play rook takes c6 because so there's bishop takes h2 with the classic fossil of the rook on c6. So, um, it still looks still still tricky. If black gets bishop d6, the b4 pawn also becomes very weak here. You think Wesley might actually win this? Um, it's possible. I think it's, this game is most likely going to be a draw, but it could it could happen. But anyway, um, yeah, we'll see. Anthony Joshua just posted a chess tweet. Nice. What would I do in White's position? Um, I mean, Magnus is trying to rotate the Knights. Again, I think there's very little risk for Black, but but White or very little risk for White. Um, but I feel like it's a draw. Both sides don't have much risk here. That's that's what I would say. They do grapefruit for the five hundred bits. Thank you so much. Yeah, Wesley is white in the next game and color choice. So Wesley is not looking terrible is what I would say. I mean, Wesley could also just try to draw it potentially. Oh, 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 oh. Wait, did Wesley just make a slight mistake? Because if takes, there's 95. Ooh. Wesley, I think, made a very slight mistake potentially. But he's still okay. It's a little bit tricky, though. A little bit tricky. Now knight e5, of course, to put pressure on c6. Queen b7, queen c2, rook c8, knight c5. It's still fine for black, but it's kind of on the wrong side. Thank you to Hikaru for the win for the gifted sub. Thank you so much to Hikaru for the win. 
it should still be, I mean, it still should be okay, but it's, it's kind of on the wrong side here. It's on the wrong side of even. Queen c2, of course, put pressure on the pawn on c6. It should be four, maybe. Right. Here, here, I mean, still probably a draw, but it feels a touch tricky. Feels a touch tricky. I think just bishop b4 and just try to kill the game here. Just make a draw if you can. Um, seems like the safest option here for Wesley. Just to eat the juicer on b4. Takes on e5. I guess same same concept. Takes in rook b4 and just trade it all down and make a draw with rook f8. Okay, so Magnus takes with the pawn. So he goes knight d7, of course. Maybe white can go rook b3, rook a3. Magnus also has just no just has no time here. What is what is going on? Wait, is there C5? Wait, takes, 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 and there's an ice skater, maybe? Oh, C5, C5. C5. He plays it. Wow. Wait, what? Rook C6? What? What? <laughs> what was what was that? Wow. I mean Did Magnus really not see rook c6? Magnus is raging? Okay. Um. <laughs> he saw rook c6, he just didn't like it? Yeah, but I mean, that's insane. I think it's dismay for the seven months. I mean, I think Rook C8, Rook B8 is the only try, but the thing, I think it's just just losing. And again, I would say the same thing. Where's uh, where was that blunder when I needed it? <laughs> but um, but yeah, crazy. Yeah, why can't Magnus do this against me? Yeah, it's bizarre. But still, um, he got low on top. Yeah, but I mean, but the thing is, the move was so obvious. That's why. That's why I don't understand it. Like the move was so obvious. That's that's why it makes no sense to me. It wasn't like it wasn't just like it was a random move. Yeah, this is over. This is just over. Queen f five and rook f two. Ggs. Rook F oh wait, no wait, Rook F two B seven No, you just trade and go Queen E five. Yeah, yeah, Rook F two GG. Wow. Thank you to Spanta Frano for the prime. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's just over. How said it was difficult visually to find? I mean, I don't it seemed it's like you could smell that something it's not even smell, but you could sense that there were there were there was something wrong with the position. It's the collapse of the Botes sisters, yeah. Yeah, it's it's over, right? Wesley won, yeah. Bizarre. Okay, let's pop the other game. It's much better for uh for Timor, but it's gonna be hard to win. No, but there's still one more game. It's not over, you guys. It's not over. Uh, let's see what's happening. So Timor is up upon an end game. I don't think Timor is gonna win this game, unfortunately. How, how, I'm gonna I'm gonna lose money. Thank you to I'm actually angelic for the three months. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Um. So yeah, I think I think I think actually Wesley will play e4 again. So so Wesley's Wesley's on his way to um, Wesley's on his way to a win. I think. He was he was molding just like the aforementioned opening. Maybe thank you Dung Hung Lung for the five months. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Um, table is not my fault. Yeah yeah. 
I think Jan is going to draw the game now. This looks like a draw for many reasons. First of all, it's the wrong color queening square. Secondly, I think you just take and you just sit on E. Yeah, you just take on E5 and sit on E7. So, yeah. Why does Magnus have so much trouble with Wesley? I think I don't even know it's Wesley. I think he's just he's making uncharacteristic blunders. He's making uncharacteristic blunders that like he would not normally be making. And that's the one thing that I think is um that's the one thing that I think kind of is is very, you know, worrisome for Magnus going into the match is that he's been having problems with everybody. He's been getting into trouble against all of his opponents. Um so it's uh yeah, it's definitely dicey. So all right, anyway, let me put the music back on. Um Bishop g6. I think black just waits here. Bishop d1, e2. Easy draw. Do I ever worry about Magnus? He seems not very skilled at dealing with disappointment. I assume you're, you're trolling me with that. Um, everybody has their moments. Still should be a draw if black just waits. Like Bishop a4, just wait around the back on these two diagonals, and it should be a pretty easy draw. I mean, black can also maybe trade, but I mean, there, there's several ways to draw this. It's just a question of which one's the easiest one. Probably my guess is the simplest is something like this, 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 and you just wait here, cut the squares, and when here, you just wait here again. So that if he goes this way, you check so he can't enter, enter on any of the squares. And it seems pretty routine. Takes with the pawn. Okay, bishop a4. Still probably a draw. Bishop g6, bishop a4, probably bishop f7 now, e6, bishop e8. It's definitely going to be a draw. Probably just king e7 back. This is going to be a draw pretty soon. So, yeah, takes and just bishop d7. Okay, just goes e6, and we have a draw. So, um, at least one of my bets I'm going to cash in on, fortunately, which is um, that Jan does win his uh, does win his match. So, let's see what I'm looking at. What am I looking at? Let's see. Um, okay, who won third place match? Okay, so this one I'm looking I'm looking very good. Um, this one's looking good for me, but the other two are looking very bad, I think. Um, what do I have? I have I have this one, which is looking good, because I think Wesley's going to keep hammering away with E4. No reason to change. He's been doing well. Um, so this one's looking good, but unfortunately, I am going to lose my big one. Magnus is 16 cents. I could YOLO on Magnus here winning with black, which is kind of interesting. At 16 cents, they give him almost 20 cents. I could also just bet on Wesley. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Tricky. I think I'm, I'm going to pass. I'm going to pass. I don't know what the I don't know. I don't know what the right one is. I, you think 16 is too low? I, I mean, I think Wesley's going to win, but I don't really want to bet on Wesley either. So I think I'm just going to pass. Yeah, it's a tricky situation. So I'm just going to pass. So all right. So this one's a draw. So so all we're waiting on then is the final one. Um. It's just the final, uh, just the, uh, the the final game between these two. So Timor win, Timor loses. Um, Jan wins wins the third place match, and um, and with that we have one 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 game remaining. Anyway, all right. So um, okay, we have we have the Sicilian played by by Magnus here. All right, we have 97 played by uh, played by Magnus. This is actually exactly what he played against me in the second game of our final match. I need RJ Hay for the prime. Thank you so much. So Wesley Castles. Music music is fine, right? I think music is good. Yeah, music is fine. All right, so let's see what Magnus will do. Will he play G6? Will he play E5? Will he play B5, E6? There are many moves. Which one will he do? He has one, two, three, four. Four moves. Let's see which one he does. It goes B6. Okay, so he wants to go... So he does one that I didn't really predict. Um, not that it's bad or anything. I guess he just wants to create a game with Bishop B7.
Thank you to Spirio for the three months. Thank you so much to Spirio. Appreciate it. Thank you. Clock is frozen. Okay, that's true. I'll, I'll reload it. Let's see. From 50k to 40k just because of that blunder. Yep. He'll probably try to he'll probably try to feed Fianchito with Bishop G7. Wesley decides to play C4. I think Magnus should play E5 and just lock it up, clog the toilet so that he can play a long game and eventually maneuver all over the place. Because now there's D4, I think. Or wait, what happens? Wait, C4, Bishop B7, Knight C3, Knight E5. Okay. If it's a draw, Wesley does win, yes. Yeah, Wesley just has to not lose. This is five minutes with three second increment, you guys. Okay, so Wesley trades, which is interesting. Um, I think you're supposed to go F4 at some point. I don't know if I love this opening from Wesley, but it looks relatively fine. Okay, so B4 played, Magnus just castles. Wesley will play like Rook B1 and Bishop E3, I assume. Try to put pressure on this B file towards uh, the Bishop on B7. I mean, if I'm Magnus, maybe he just takes on B4 and plays like A5 or Knight E7 and then A5. Goes Knight E7, okay. I wonder about F5, F4 here. Maybe just, maybe just attack. Because F5, F3, there is Bishop H4 maybe. I actually like f5 here. I think f5 is a good move if Magnus plays it. The two moves are takes or f5 to me. Nothing else really makes sense here. Queen c7 is a move, but it doesn't... I'm worried about knight a4. Worried about some knight a4 here. But maybe it's not really a problem. You can still just trade. So probably, um, I don't know, Magnus takes. I mean, the moves I, I still see are f5 takes or rook, one of the rooks to the center of the board. Those are really the only, only moves I would be considering here if I'm Magnus. The difference is in an Armageddon game um, that one side has to win. After that E5 from Magnus and the Sicilian, he deserves to lose. Well, it's true. Like, E5 was very bizarre from Magnus. I, I don't even know what it was. It was just very, very weird. Um, okay, so he takes and plays A5. Kind of expected this. But again, it's it's kind of a little bit hard to win this because there's a very... It's very slight structural instability. These, uh, these pawns on D3, C4, E4 versus the pawn on B6... I don't think I, I think that Wesley should be able to draw this if he trades and goes like Queen B1. I'm feeling I'm feeling pretty good for uh for Wesley right now. It was a misclick. Was it a misclick though, Adrian? Because they said Magnus had no reaction on stream. So I'm not sure it was a misclick. I'm not sure about that. Cause they said he had no reaction. So I'm not I'm not sure when you guys assumed that it was some kind of misclick. It, it, it is a misclick? I mean, who knows? I don't know. Okay, queen d8, good move. Idea to play knight c5, bishop c6 as well. Um, there is an imbalance, though. For, for Magnus, there is a significant imbalance here with this a pawn. Like, there's an actual imbalance here now. There's an actual imbalance. So I'm, I'm, I feel like the odds of this being a decisive game go up a lot now. Okay, Rook A1. So I assume what Bishop C5 or Knight C5. One of these two moves must be correct. I don't know which one is correct, but one of these two moves must be correct. If it was a misclick, he reacted insanely. So it wasn't a misclick. Yeah, thank you to Slimster for three months. Thank you so much, Slimster. Uh, imbalance is good because Magnus has to win the game. So he doesn't want something that's stable and very drawish. He needs to win this game. Um, I kind of, I kind of have to say that after knight c5, I'm kind of liking Magnus's position a little bit. Because this knight on b5 looks a little bit misplaced. 
It's not really going anywhere. We'll see if Magnus plays Knight C5 here. Bishop C5 is a little bit better. Okay. So who knows? Who knows? I mean, I, I I don't know why Magnus is thinking. The only two moves that make sense are one of these pieces of C five. Like, he plays H six. Wow. Okay. Magnus is also moving way too slowly in this game. By the way. Maybe not too slowly yet, but it's getting on the point where he's going to have to speed up pretty soon, or it's going to be very bad for him. Um, again, I'm wondering if White can play d4 and just knight d4 because the queen guards the pawn, although maybe there's a takes and something with bishop f6 possibly. I think it's Shalom Dog for six months. Can't Magnus draw? No, Magnus has to win. A draw is not good enough for him here. And now I think it's going the wrong direction, very much the wrong direction, because now with the bishop off the board... I feel like white should have ways to draw this. It feels like what there should be ways for white to draw this. Oh, and now you, you get tickled here. You can't go back because now white can force a draw. Oh, that's brilliant by Wesley. That's really quite brilliant. Yeah, Magnus is he's he's not gonna have a chance to win now. That's brilliant by Wesley. Absolutely brilliant. Because now Magnus has to trade and I think white's just white's too fast here of course why is magnus thinking this is the only move he can play because he can't make the draw i mean i i just don't know how you win here if you're black that's the problem because queen d8 just knight a7 i mean okay so knight a7 of course The thing is, you have to go back. Wait, but then there might be rook a5 even? Very ugly move. Um, well, I mean, the thing is, I thought there might be some trick like rook a5. Well, I guess after takes... It looks scary, but I mean, maybe it's okay. I mean, you have queen a queen a six also to force it. Ah, ah, okay, that's the idea. Yeah, yeah, okay. Queen a six is probably his idea. Yeah. I don't like it. Okay, but I don't like h three. Now again, isn't knight c five or bishops? I mean, you have to do something with knight c five. But Magnus also has a minute fourteen and, and ticking. Like he's running out of time here. Queen a6 did not lose to rook a5, actually. It, it looks losing, but it's not losing. Because after after takes, takes knight c6, there's queen a3. And if rook b7, I think there's rook fc8. I mean, it's just barely hanging on by a thread. But it was not losing. Okay, Magnus does play knight c5. Okay, I guess it's zeros for the whole line, right? Okay, rook a2. White's trying to take the pawn. I assume black goes a4. Takes, takes, like, I mean, this has to be really bad for black, for white. Takes, 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 takes an F5. I mean, this looks very bad. So, so he does play A4. It's, this is very unclear. I mean, this, this is a very, very unclear position. Both players are running out of time. I mean, it's very, uh, knight B3. Both players might blunder here. And, and I think Wesley just blundered. He moves the rook and you lose the, you lose the knight. Um... Yep, I told you, like, they're too low on time. Blunders are going to happen here. So trade, trade, trade. I mean, this A-pawn is very dangerous now. Thank you to Josh Burke for the six months. Thank you to David for the eight. Thank you to Mazungu for the six. Thank you so much. Um, okay, Queen D7. So white takes, obviously. Takes, but eh, this, is getting, eh, this is getting very sketchy for white. Yeah, but now you're going to lose. Bishop c5, and you're going to lose. You're going to lose because there's going to be... Positionally, there's going to be some... This pony's coming to d4. Like, queen c7, bishop c5, pony to d4, and black wins. If Magnus plays queen c7 and bishop c5, I think he's going to win this game. Yeah, I don't think Wesley's going to hold this. In, unless Magnus tanks here and doesn't... Tanks and plays a bad move here. Okay. 
Okay. Okay. Goes knight d4. Wow. Maybe a good, maybe a brilliant move in a way. Okay. Maybe just f6 and hold. Magnus has no time though. He's just, he's way too slow. Just way too slow. I mean, m mind you, Magnus might still win the game, but he's, his time usage here has been really, really shaky. Really shaky here. He gets he gets a three second increment with every move, but he does have this pass pawn. Like his moves are not implausible. Like he can put the bishop, go a three and go rook b eight. Like it's not implausible that he he could win this game because he has fourteen seconds. The the other problem for Wesley though is that Magnus can't really blunder here. It's too simple. Position is too stable. It's too stable. There's no like imbalance on the king's side. So so what Magnus just has like very basic ideas like bishop c5, rook b8, a3, and so it's kind of hard for Wesley to play this. So takes obviously, and a3. I mean a3 and rook b8. This pawn also on f4 wishes it was on f2 because there's gonna be some bishop f6. Okay, I like c5 by Wesley. Okay, Magnus has to move. Uh, he's going to, I mean, he's going to go queen b3. But then there's queen d6 and rook b. I think Magnus is going to win. Magnus is going to win now. He's going to win this game even though he has nine seconds. Wow. And now we're going to be in a situation where, where Magnus is going to have to win a second game in a row with... Um, yeah, rook b2 is gg, I think, here. Rook b2 looks like game over. You have to go rook a1. Yeah, yeah. And and Wesley now has to defend. I think f5 is gg. Yeah. <sighs> wow. What a game by Magnus. What a game. The shirt gambit worked? Yeah, what a game. So, yeah, and actually, I'm going to pull up that market. Gosh, let's... Let, let's see what the what that market looks like. That's probably an insane market. Let's see what does that market look like. It, it that how how low did it dip? Did, did it really only dip to thirty nine? No, that that's got to be wrong, right? No, no, it, it dipped more. I'm only seeing this looks wrong somehow, but maybe I'm crazy. It dipped to ten. Okay, so the market's just not showing correctly. Let me reload. Yeah, yeah, okay. It dipped to ten. Yeah, okay, yeah. It's, I, I assume it's just or, the page is overloading, so it's not. It's not because it, it definitely dipped quite a lot. So now the question is, what do I do here, you guys? Do I hold? Do do I do I hodl it here on Magnus or do I not hodl it? That's the question. Do I hodl it or not? I'm guessing that I do hodl it, right? That's got to be the right decision here. I must hodl it. Yeah, okay. Okay, here we go. We have an Italian. So now bet one is in the books. Um, no knight f3, so I win that bet. So now all I need is Magnus to win this bet, and it will it will be very profitable. Magnus just needs to win this game. Maybe... Um, also, um, yeah, so... I don't know. So d4, b4. He plays b4. So bishop e7, I assume. Okay, bishop b6. Normally, you're supposed to go here to play d5. Um, I don't know if bishop a3 and b5 is a move. Maybe just knight bt2. Thank you to Best Brief for the prime. Thank you to Kev Bot MXX for the prime. Thank you to um, Luca1 for the four months. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Will I be invited to the one to SF? I'll probably just qualify from the... Uh, Five remaining spots from two tournaments, most likely. Oh, the clock's not running. Sorry, let me reload it. Oh, sorry, wrong game. Okay, here we go. Okay, so knight, knight e7 played. I don't know if a5 and d4 is the move. Probably you should play a5 at some point. Just take the max space. He plays d4 here. Okay. 
This is actually not too different from my game against um, my game against Magnus in the uh, earlier in the event where it was takes, d5 takes, and I took with the e knight and, instead of the f knight. So I assume d5 takes, knight d5 will be played. Oh, wait, there's e5 maybe. Oh, wait, there's e5. Oh, Wesley blundered. Blundered is too strong of a way of putting it, but it's a mistake. Because if white has e5 after d5, the structure is not good. Yeah, Wesley kind of made a mistake here. It doesn't mean it's losing, but it's not correct. Yeah, Wesley's going to be in trouble now. So, um... How do I know what? Well, I just know because structurally when, D, when white is to take, this is when you play it. But if white can ignore it and keep the structure intact like this, this is very bad for black. And this is probably why, um, that's probably why, uh, why it's looking, it's looking very bad for, for Wesley or why Wesley's thinking. Cause he realizes it was a mistake. Yeah. He realizes it was a mistake for sure now. So Wesley's down on the clock. Position is also bad. Um, This looks very bad for black. I don't know. I mean, it feels very wrong. If black can get F6, then black has chances. But black desperately needs F6. Wesley should not have changed shirt. Actually, in a way, he probably shouldn't have. Because by changing shirt, he also is kind of showing that, like, he, the seriousness is sort of letting letting go a touch, I feel like. So maybe you're right. Probably shouldn't have. Like, Magnus, I get, but Wesley, a little bit less so, because then you're kind of playing into the whole meta of, like, it's not serious, we're just chilling and having fun, let's laugh, let's have a good time. When Magnus, definitely, you know, it's not about, uh, it's not it's not like that. So I think it's actually a kind of a mistake by Wesley to do that. He's trying to be funny, but I think it's a big mistake. Also, Magnus just takes and goes queen d2. This is very bad. Very, very bad for Wesley. Like bishop d3, okay, knight c5. I mean, this is just terrible for, for black. Bishop g4, maybe? Okay, he tries f6. I mean, but now bishop d3, I mean, this... This is going downhill fast for Wesley. Yeah, Magnus plays it. Also, if you go knight e7, I just trade and I just trade and now I, now, I, now I double into the triple stack potentially, and you're just getting sauced on the e file. Plays f5, probably the only move. Um... I mean, rook c1's good. I expect Magnus to win this game, by the way. I expect Magnus to win this game. This feels like a Magnus position. Black is very cramped, no development. This just It feels very tough. If Black can somehow get rook f7, knight f8, knight e6 in, maybe it's playable, but I, I this, is, this is a Magnus position. I mean, if Magnus doesn't win this game, he does not deserve to win the match, because this is about, this is the sort of position that Magnus will win all the time. I mean, he'll win this position like 90% of the time. It's just very clean, positional, simple idea like rook a3, g4, very clean concepts. So, I mean, Magnus, it's it's on Magnus. He should win from this position. I assume he take with the d pawn. He takes with the b pawn. Interesting. I mean, I think rook b1 looks strong. Just Okay, rook b8. Maybe you just double stack anyway this way. Maybe this way. I don't know which one. If it's this or this, but you, you go for the box. Probably queen c8, knight h4, yeah. And now at some point there's gonna be there's gonna be a g4 and, and the and the diagonal is gonna get cracked wide open and white's gonna checkmate. It's just I mean 30 seconds. Okay, maybe h4, knight f4 is the idea. I don't know what the idea is necessarily for Magnus here, but he should be much better. Yeah, I mean, Magnus is going to win. Plays h4. I don't love that. He's giving Wesley a little bit of counterplay now with knight c6. But it still should be winning. If I'm Wesley, I might even just play f4 here. Isn't there f4? Wait. Wait. No, Wesley missed f4 there. F4, f4, I think, was playable. 
Because now on F4, you can just take... Yeah, what Wesley's just gonna... Yeah, Magnus plays F4. Oof. You just take, and now the king... Black's king is more open than White's king. Just takes knight F4. Yeah, just takes knight f4. Okay, he doesn't take the pawn. Again, he can take the pawn. I think he should. But there's f4, knight f4. King d1, queen h8, knight h4 probably is winning. Whoa, knight d4, queen d5. Time, time is really going down here. Wesley's way too low on time. 35 seconds, no increment. No increment. No increment coming. King G1. King G1, because then Queen H8, there's Queen D7. Rook goes back, Knight F4, GG. Plays E6. Queen D8. I guess you trade or Queen D7. Probably you just trade. Yeah, you, you should just trade and take the juicer. Or Queen D7, okay. Okay, Rook takes B7. Rook takes c7 and rook c8. Yeah, Wesley's going to lose. Yeah, no increment, you guys. No increment. Yeah, yeah, this is over. 17 seconds. Wow, what a comeback from Magnus. And and Wesley resides and Magnus wins the game. Wow. Well, what I will say is what I always say, which is, um, you know, when you look at the great champions, it doesn't matter what, um, you know, whether it's chess, whether it's basketball, um, basketball or... Um, like tennis or whatever it is, the great champions, they find a way to be very, very clutch. They find a way to be clutch at the critical moments. And Magnus, amazingly, very, very clutch. Um, obviously, Wesley had it there. If he had played that whole uh, knight c6 and rook b7 line, he would have been able to make the draw. But Magnus was clutch, finds a way um, to win this one, amazingly, because uh, it seemed like Wesley was well on his way to victory. So very well-deserved um, deserved victory for Magnus. He pulls it out when all is said and done. So let's take one last look. Let's see. So um, where do we end? Let, let's see. What do we have? Let's see the uh, Magnus graph. Yeah, look at this Magnus graph. Ooh, 69 cents down to... Magnus got as low as 19 cents, it looks like. Got as low as 19 cents, and now he's 99 cents, and he's going to he's gonna win pretty, pretty good when all is said and done. Um, pr pretty, pretty good. Pretty good.